Welcome in, folks. Welcome in. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited. So very, very stoked to have you all. Very happy to have my boy Omni here running a game for the first time on our channel. Let's go. <laughs> Hell yeah. What's up, everybody? Omni, how's hey, it going? Folks. Oh, boy. It is going. It is going good. I am... I'm so excited to run this for you guys. I thank you all so much for tuning in, and... Welcome to Mouse Guard The Frontier. So, uh, let us first go around the room. Introduce ourselves, everyone. Uh, you all know me. I'm the last Omnitech, your favorite robot American. And I do a fair bit of art streams and world building streams on my own channel three days a week. I just finished up my AS campaign, and I'm starting this up. So this is going to be great. Uh, who's next? Elise, I nominate the... Oh no, I just took a bite of my cookie. Uh -huh. <laughs> you got I'll go. Okay. <laughs> go ahead, Nat. Okay, um, I'm Natalie, or um, at Ludzozo Beans on tw uh, Twitter. You can catch me here um, most Saturdays, either playing something random like this, or um, Covet Syndicate in Lancer. That's about it. <laughs> nice. Uh... All right. I'm your boy. So nice to see all of you here. I was gone for like the whole week. Uh, we had a wild and crazy charity stream on Sunday, but very nice to be back. Lost your check. Thank you, Saul. Thank you, my friend. Okay. So, so there's no more time left. You have to introduce yourself. It's okay. <laughs> I didn't take a bite of my cookie this time. I had some foresight. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's so good to see everybody here. Um, I'm Elise at Illustrate on Twitter and Instagram, and I do art things. I am an artist teaching other, helping other creatives spend more time creating and less time struggling with time management or clunky workflows. Come check me out at illustrate.com and join my newsletter for free creativity tools. Oh, and awesome. I'll be playing Delilah the Weasel. Yes. Let's. So we're going to get to introducing our characters now. And let's take a brief moment to talk about uh, sort of a little bit of the differences of what's going to be going on in this. So let me just... Okay. So the normal game of Mouse Guard usually runs with the uh, a certain bit of an understanding that the game is usually from the perspective of solely mice. However, this is sort of an odd thing. This is currently set in the year of 1162, spring specifically. So this is 10 years after the last comic book was produced. For those of you who don't know, Mouse Guard is in and of itself a comic book and a fantastic one. I cannot recommend enough. Not sponsored, but seriously, these comics are beautiful and fun and a great read of all, for all ages. If you're older, you'll be surprised how brutal they are. And if you're younger, you'll just think, oh, cute, mice with swords, ha! Huh? You won't really think too much about the fact that you just witnessed someone get decapitated on, on your comic. Um, the I artist think most actually <laughs> might, might, you know? They might actually yeah. be affected by that on me. Are we or enjoy up? it. Uh, no, because it's just really well done. Um, <laughs> also, I read Animorphs when I was a kid, so my skew of uh, what's appropriate for kids off. Um, David Peterson is the artist and he's fantastic, and we are using Mouse Guard playing game, first edition, not second edition. So if y'all are out there telling me that this is what it's like in second edition, I'm sure. We're not don't using it. Yeah, don't <laughs> at me, or at me and get ready to fight. Um, so, the setting is 1162. This is 10 years after the last comic. As a result, in short order, the mouse territories have been going through multiple seasons of upheaval. In fairness, the mouse territories are always under upheaval. The mouse territories, as they are, are a large stretch of land, kilometers in length, dominated and ruled by the mice of the mouse territories, many of them in small, self-sufficient, for the most part, city-states and settlements across the area, each hidden and protected by their own town, their own laws, their own protectors and traditions. They're all wildly different. As you can see from our little background here, 
all the mice from this are in the comic, and they are from scattered all across the area. The only thing they truly have in common is the need to survive, which the Mouse Guard provide, where each of the towns have their own personal guard, perhaps, and their own soldiery, their own resources. The Mouse Guard are those mice who aren't sworn to any one settlement, but instead have agreed to gather together for the betterment of all mice within the Mouse Territories, providing transport, mail delivery, resource and medicine delivery, scouting, as well as also escort fighting predators, hunting predators, hunting and stopping people who would start wars and uprisings. And the most pivotal task, the pouring of the scent board. A large, I guess uh, we could call it like a, it's basically like a pheromonal cocktail kind of, that the science mice whip up every, I believe it's twice a year, which is made up of the artificial scent of many extremely dangerous predators. It keeps things like bears and elk and even most wolves out of the mouse territories. But even with that, the territories are still dangerous. Because when you're a mouse, less than a half a foot tall, everything views you as a meal. The mouse guard has over the past couple centuries endured and kept the citizens of the mouse territories relatively safe, but not always. There have been wars, the Weasel Wars as an example, when a group of weasels from a region called the Dark Heather to the southeast of the Mouse Territories, as I am about to show off. If I can zoom on in, get to 100%, there we go. So, the Dark Heather to the southwest of the Territories is swarming with weasels, and after watching the Mouse Territories relatively prosperous, they decided that mice were a great food source and plunged their way into the territories, fighting a brutal war of attrition, which the mice only won through grit and numbers. That was, at this point, you're looking about 15 years ago. Five years after that, there was a massive coup attempt, where one particular mouse by the name of Midnight raised an army known as the Axe and attempted to take over Lockhaven the capital of the Mouse Territories. This failed, but at great cost to the Guard and many others. So, with a almost on the heels within short... This is all official canon, by the way, of a major war, a rebellion, within five years of that, literally just like, I believe, two years later, a group of nomadic peoples known as the Hedgehogs, Hedgehogs, industrious, brilliant folks who moved through on caravans, wagons, and mastered metallurgy, and the basic chemistries of black power, roamed through the territory and had a major civil war amongst themselves, with a group of them, known as the Regems, led by Raphael the Red, attempting to also overthrow Lockhaven, and commissioning weasels as auxiliary troops. During the battle, the Regems found a change of heart and turned on the weasels, saving the territories, but leaving it to an uneasy peace, where half the hedgehogs now comfortably reside within the territories, and the other half are banished beyond the edge of the Sentinel, who, exiled, still attempt to protect the people they once attempted to destroy. All of this has occurred five years ago. We are now in 1162, spring of. It has been many years of plenty and quiet, despite the still occasional disaster there, it's been nowhere near as hostile to live in the territories as it was before, and the territories are absolutely brimming with mice. Which sounds like a great thing, until you realize secrecy and discretion are what keep the mouse territories safe from larger predators. A bear will absolutely destroy a mouse settlement if it's visible from the ground, even beyond the scent board. And so, the mice of the territories now struggle with what to do in the face of utter annihilation. Through However, a decision was made, and the Mouse Guard had proposed a series of expeditions to found new territories far into wild country beyond the boundary of the Mouse Territories, in hopes that maybe, just maybe, these new settlements might be able to eventually be a place from which trade commerce, and eventually people may go. This is where we pick up. So who wants to start today? 
Which of you would like to be the first? Not me. Those goes. <laughs> All right. So, let's start with you, Derek. No, I said not me. <sighs> Fine. Oh, I thought let's you were see. picking me, even though I said not me. Oh, I, I was actually. I was being. I was being persnickety. You oh. know what? I have a chance cube here. Uh, we're gonna go with one, two, three. Literally from my perspective. Derek, guess what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it actually did roll you. Um, okay. So, Derek. Yes. Let's introduce your character. Give us a quick description of your character's name and what they look. Like. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So my character's name is Dukan Diamondback. Ooh, look at me! I'm beautiful. <laughs> let me pull, pull me up. Thanks. Let me. Why won't let me go full screen? I want to go full screen. I want to see uh, it's the top screen. left. It's the top left. I have to click on that. Is it not? Oh, son of a gun. Fine, I'll make a handout of it. Give me a second. Okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. So, anyhow, you were saying, my friend? Yeah, my Let's name see. is uh, Dukon Diamondback. I am a smoky gray colored, uh, kind of clad in uh, the skulls and bones of my fallen enemies. And uh, down my back, I bear a, uh, a cloak made from the snake that killed my master. Uh, my master taught me a lot of things, and uh, when he died, it gave me the opportunity to kill the snake. And now I wear the cloak in memory of um, that event. Oh, now I can go full screen. Thank you. Yeah, Look you're good. There I'm you are. adorable. <laughs> <laughs> you are. I just drew that. Please pardon me, folks. I again, art assets coming as they're made. So uh, brilliant job. Thank uh, you. Yeah, as you can see, I carry a big fuck off halberd. Um, it was at one point a double sided axe, but it broke off uh, at some point, and now I wield it as a halberd. Um, I'm a danger noodle in every sense of the word, and I was built to kill stuff. Yeah, stuff right I think. Risk. I think that's pretty fair to say, and actually gets on to one of the biggest uh, and most interesting parts of uh, the this particular campaign. We're not just playing mice. There will also be hedgehogs and weasels in this camp. I want to make this clear. The hedgehogs are my addition to this setting. David Peterson never introduced those into the setting. Those are my folks. So if anyone out there is a mouse guard purist, promise this is in fact my own setting. I'm not trying to step on David's uh, toes here, but you know, running a little bit of homebrew here. We love homebrew so, on the channel. Yeah. So uh, yes, we will in fact have weasel player characters and hedgehog player characters. The game is strangely balanced on that. Um, so then, knowing this, let us go to you. Your character has lived for years within the Dark Heather. You get to choose how far into the Dark Heather you go. As the Dark Heather itself, let's see, let's see, there we go. So the Dark Heather itself stretches many miles under the ground of the Weasel territories. In some cases, the tunnels of the Dark Heather are actually so extensive that they literally go all the way underneath the existing territories of the Mouse Guard, all the way up to Lock Haven, it's been found. Because the Dark Heather itself is not actually just what the weasels made. Turns out, the weasels like stealing burrows and territory, and they're perfectly content taking it from any animal. That's serpents, that's moles, that's crickets. They don't care. So, if I can save that, show to players, yes, show to everyone. There you go. So that is the Dark Heather. And the tunnel network is extensive. It goes on for many miles in many directions. Where you live, it's your choice. But uh, in this instance, I would be willing to say that your character, has your character already heard of the expedition because it is planning to set out soon? Um, uh, do you definitely, yeah. Okay, so that's the case then. Your character has probably signed up on the sly through that captain, we'll introduce them in a little bit. But uh, have you told anyone else in the Dark Heather of your plans to go with the mice? Hmm. I think that my family probably would have ordered me to go. Um, you know, 
probably like you need to go do this thing to uh, make us look good. Um, it's kind of a political move to send uh, a child, not literally a child, but uh, you know, a, a person who is um, not currently. You know what I'm saying? A man oh, child. Yeah. A man child uh, <laughs> off to battle. It's like the Buster Bluth moment if you're familiar with Arrested Development. Um, yes, 100%. I get that. Yeah. <laughs> It was kind of thrust right. upon me. That's very fair. Um, now, you are aware that this expedition is one way. This will take, in very possibly, years of travel. And you don't know when they're going to be done. No one knows. Um, likewise, not every weasel is content with this decision. Uh, and in fact, the bulk still aren't okay with it. Most of the weasels tunnel lords and overlords still view the mouse territories as what the weasels have always viewed them. Food. Mice are to weasels what potato chips are to humans. That's not even a joke. As far as they're concerned, the average weasel would just as soon decapitate and eat a mouse as they would speak to it. And oftentimes, they lean towards the decapitating and eating because that's tastier. Um, so, when Gwendolyn or I should say, the matriarch of the Mouse Guard, send out her runners, you know that many mice perished attempting to get overlords to listen. But for some reason or other, your tunnel lord relative, I'm willing to say an uncle, was very keen on listening to this mouse. You have heard over the years and seen how this kingdom of the Dark Heaven, a place built on survival of the fittest on the triumph of the strongest has stagnated slowly in the years since the end of the hedge wars and the stability brought on by the settlement of hedgehogs and the growth of the mice has meant that the weasels have been able to prey on the mice as readily or easily and infighting has long since stagnated as factions have hardened within the dark heaven leaving people like you an up-and-comer kind of out to dry. There is not really much mobility in this civilization at the moment. And you're, and as far as you know, the Tunnel Lord who is your uncle, they know, they're well aware, and they're not okay with it. So we'll say that it's early morning, about three days until the expedition sets out. And this is where I'm going to ask you, what is your goal for this session? Um, prove that I am a worthwhile addition. Okay. Worth on the expedition. Excellent. I love that. Okay. So to get to the expedition, you need to, uh, you know, you need to leave the Dark Heaven. And not all will be okay with it. There will be many who will not allow you to leave. So we're going to very quickly just borrow that right here and make another handout for you guys. And much of this art here is David Peterson's art. In case you're wondering which one it is, it's the one that doesn't look like it was sketched by somebody. You'll you'll know. <laughs> um, you know he did his own art? Yes. This whole... I'm not kidding when I tell you. You should read Mouse Guard because this guy did the writing, the panel work, and all the art. This is all him. This is him. Everything's him. The role-playing game was made by two people using the Burning Wheel system as a base. Luke Crane, the creator of Burning Wheel, one of the creators of Burning Wheel, and David Peterson, which is the artist and so writer of Mouse Burning Star. Wheel Hack? This is a Burning Wheel Hack. I've always wanted yes. to play Burning Wheel. That's awesome. Well, now you are. So, uh, I'm going to say that this is me showing this to everyone. So, Dukan, it's early in the morning. You can tell, because even though you're in the dark, Heather, very little light reaches, the few chambers of light that are in the area, the ones that shine down on the giant piles of corpses within the under zones of the dark, Heather, maintained by the many robed acolytes underneath the overlords to ensure the spirits of the damned and the dead don't haunt your dark, Heather. The light there is warm, beginning to get brighter, slowly inch by inch, climbing down the far walls of the chamber. I want to say that you're 
likely your actual home, your personal domicile, and the one of your immediate tunnel lord uncle and your immediate family within is not too far off of this. Uh, probably down just like one of the nearest corridors. But you can still see that there is in fact mist and dew coating the inside chambers of the Dark Heather near this place where it opens up in a small little vent to the sky. There's enough to let humidity down. So far you haven't seen many weasels yet, but you know that your uncle has insisted on seeing you, as well as also perhaps uh, your sister. This, might be, this dude's my uncle? This dude will be your uncle, yes. This dude rocks. He's got like two fucking rattlesnake. <laughs> or not earrings, but like hat, classics. Yeah, he's pretty awesome. I love. Him. Um, so, uh, Derek, how are you gonna just are you gonna go race over to speak to him, or are you kind of like getting yourself ready to go? Because the journey to get from where you are, which I'm gonna say you're roughly around the area of, I want to say Spruce Talk. Pretty sure we're gonna say Spruce Talk because as I recall. Uh, I do Yeah. I think Spruce Tuck is where we're going to put you. Um, it's going to be a couple, like, days walk from where you are in that part of the Dark Heather all the way to Lock Haven. And you can go either through the Dark Heather or through the, sur or through the surface. Either way works. Hmm. Well, hmm. Do I know if my sister's going already or not? Hmm. That's a great question. Uh, hey, Elise, why don't you yes. introduce your character and uh, let us know whether or not she would have told uh, your character, or whether you should, she would have told uh, Dukan whether she's going or not. Hello, everybody. I will be playing Delilah the Weasel. Delilah is a brown and white weasel with mottled fur. And she wears a light sage green cloak and scarf and she also has a um a fire heart and staff and an adder fang knife with a little satchel full of tools and she um um she's she, as far as weasels go she seems very unassuming okay what is your goal for this session by the um way? my goal for the session is probably going to be um, escort my brother Dukan to to the um, to the what's the word I'm looking for um, excursion to the expedition expedition okay. thank you okay escort Dukan safely to the expedition okay awesome I have added that as your goal for the session thank you if you if you achieve your goal, you in fact get benefits at the end of it. Just a heads Yay. up. Yay! So then. Do you um, get like more benefits if you don't accomplish it in like one session and it takes like multiple sessions to accomplish it? Uh, that's a great question. I don't remember precisely. It's been a while since I've run this, so pardon me because I've run this too. Um, but uh, as I understand, they do give you the option if you're not able to accomplish your goal in the course of one session to re roll it and make something else. At the end of a session, so you're not stuck forever with not accomplishing your goals. Okay. Um, that has happened. You had a player like, I really want to do this goal. I'm like, it'll be fine. Go ahead. Be good. Mm. It'll be fine. Um, and we can work around with it. But you, I'm pretty sure you'll accomplish your goal. Okay. Session or two. So, um, would you, uh, Delilah, have told Dukan about the fact that you're going? Um, if you are, if you are okay with this, since we already discussed Delilah is uh, coming and going a lot, mm. being a Pathfinder, that she was the one who told her uncle about the expedition, oh. um, in, in need of weasel muscle. I think that's entirely fair, actually. And I very much enjoy that idea. So yes, we'll go with that. Yes. Um, if you're all right with that, Derek? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. For the record, folks, we are going to be going with a very, uh, for the purposes of this campaign, there's going to be a little bit of a yes and kind of feel for the character and world and lore development between characters because it's going to get kind of soapy 
but I like that. It's, I have a question. Fun. Is this is this town down there called Bitch Flow? I'm going to have to look at that a little more carefully to answer that. Oh, at the very, very... No, it's... I can see why you'd see that. It looks like Bitch Flow. That's hilarious. Uh, I it's birch something. I can't remember what it is, but it's birch something. Um, birch or something maybe. I believe so. I have it right over here. List of it. I, I like bitch flow better. I like bitch flow better. <laughs> Someone in the territories, I'm sure. Uh, wow, is it not here? What? That's absolutely impossible to believe. It's a it's a paper town. So they they put that there on purpose. That way, uh, anybody who uses this map, if they come across it, they'd be like. Hey, that's not your map. That's my map. I made that map. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Um, interesting. Out, yeah, clearly. Clearly it has to be. We have no other choice. Uh, I'm going to go with Birch Flow, but it could change. Wow, I never noticed that. Ever. Damn. That definitely <laughs> says Bitch Flow. Yeah. Yeah. Bitch, I, it doesn't exist, bitch flower. No, there's no yeah, doubt in my things. mind that says bitch flower. Yeah, birch flower. That's what it's. Birch flower. Son of a gun. Um, it's just spelled old English, so flower in the way of like actual, like uh, you know, eating flower. Um, Got it. But it, you know, keep your keep your meme. I'm not gonna deny you guys your sources I, of fun. I I, um, I have to agree with uh, <laughs> le just like the the one above Lock Haven says chicken down. <laughs> Thistle down. I That's think that thistle down. Thistle down. That definitely yes. says chicken down. It does look like chicken down. I'll give it does you that. Look like that. So, um, regardless, so you're the one who found. If that's the case, then at least your character, a couple of, I'm willing to say, about a week ago, was the one who intercepted the mouse courier who was going to the territory, who would have been absolutely bloody and battered. Uh, literally looked like it got the ever loving crap kicked out of them probably by other weasels, and survived by the skin of their teeth. And you... What, what, what would you have done in that circumstance, then? I imagine. I'm just picturing this poor mouse is just like, I made it! I'm alive! I'm yeah. gonna survive! And then my character shows up and they're like, no! Yeah. <laughs> the good news is, they're looking for weasels. Um, the bad news is, up until they had met you, they had found weasels. And weasels are not traditionally nice to mice. Um, this mouse, by the way, would have been equipped lightly with a bow and arrow, and their whole thing would be to stay far away, but they still would have gotten a crud kicked out of them and clearly have barely survived more than one encounter. So bearing the news to you that there is an expedition and that they are planning on leaving, they are looking for willing weasels in exchange for amnesty, the crimes committed to the mouse peoples and the hedgehogs during both the Regim War and the Weasel Wars for the immediate family they're in, should they be willing to send someone to assist. But immediate family. So we're talking like aunts, uncles, sisters, brothers, mothers, fathers. That's it. So like otherwise with the labyrinthine family ties, the dark heather, you'd be forgetting a third of the dark heather by giving like fam like familial amnesty, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, having received that word, would you have brought the mouse to meet with the Overlord? Or your Tunnel Lord uncle? Would you have just sort of told them about it? Um, I think I would have... Uh, Delilah would have gotten, you know, this in writing from the mouse. Yes, they would and, have scrolls. Yes, they would have gotten this in writing from the mouse and then had the mouse stay on the surface while she took the message down because she doesn't want the mouse getting jumped and killed after coming all that way. All right. And then um, she'll return to the mouse with their family's answer, which will be, of course, yes. Okay, excellent. Uh, the mouse would have likely entered the Dark Heather only one more time, this directly to speak to your father. Um, but they said they would do that at some unmentioned time in the future when it got closer to time for the expedition to leave. With the understanding that you don't tell people about this expedition or your participation in it, because as the mouse made quite abundant, there are a great many weasels who would kill one another 
or having done something as cowardly or stupid as going to fight with food. Um, no, so, they can fuck off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, the uh, if that's the case, then, so, Dukan, would you have gone to see your uncle relatively quickly, then? I think. I know I asked this question probably. probably so. to it. Okay. So, still early in the morning. Um, gone there. Likewise, also, uh, Delilah, you would have been summoned by your uncle at the same time. Indeed. Okay. So, um, when you enter the chamber, again, these dark, dank, dark heather chambers, um, the room you enter is actually rather nice by the standards of dark heather. Uh, even by the standards of mice, it's rather delightful. Your uncle's an eccentric weasel, known as Cabarax the Fell. Cabarax has been a, well, Cabarax is a rather fond sort for golds and plunder. He fought in the Weasel Wars and fought in many annihilated wars prior on the mice of the outside of the Mouse Territories. What the mice within the Mouse Territories don't realize is there's many colonies of mice outside the boundaries of the Central or at least there were many decades ago, but Cabarax, now almost pure white with age, has seen personally many of those settlements destroyed and where many other weasels relished in the slaughter and the consumption of their residents, so the torture of the mice there. Cabarax, Cabarax always was more enamored with their goods and their wealth. He loves and always will love gold and coin. And he's always been sort of crafty by the weasel's standards, even the weasels who are known for their money. So, Cabarax is currently sitting on a large pile of cushions, a throne of sorts, but he's curled up, much like you would imagine a ferret would on top of a nice pile of pill pillows. Um, slowly, he cranes his head up, still wearing the puffy, clo like, red clothing and the scale mail what appears to be dipped in gold, or at least rimmed with it in many cases. And slowly gestures for you two to slink forward and have a seat on your own resting pillows in front of the larger pile he rests on, illuminated by a pair of torches at his sides. Yeah, Come uh... in. Yeah, I uh, kind of shuffle forward uneasily, looking at my sister like, what did you get me into? And uh, make my way uneasily down and kind of like sit without really making eye contact. Gestures for you to come as well, though. And gestures towards a pillow in front of him. Delilah Delila would approach with a bow and take a seat next to her brother and she'd give Dakan a little nod because they probably hadn't seen each other in a very long time. So Cabarax looks between the two of you, snaps one of his little weaselly fingers, and another weasel, uh, likely a peasant, one of the many in the Dark Heather, the kind of weasel that don't quite get to really have share in the great and vast wealth of the Dark Heather. And even Cabarax, as unweasely as he is, is still a weasel. And weasels are very much known for claiming treasure and possessions of others and gloating about it. Cabarax doesn't gloat too much, but his displays of wealth border on the obscene. And it's quite clear it is a form of gloating. It's just a quiet kind. As this uh, weasel peasant sort of like lopes forth holding a tray cast out of what appears to be some kind of sterling silver and on it there is a large bowl which appears to be filled with wine which your uncle takes out and sips and begins to slowly rotate in one of his hands so i have been sent a runner by the guard you may step forward and be quiet about it and from the shadows, steps forward a single mouse. A mouse that you've never seen before, Delilah, this is a new one. 
Um, I relatively like about average size, slightly taller mouse, a little over a half foot. Um, gray, pointed ears. Appears to have like little mudden chops on the sides of his face where his fur has <laughs> like, grown out a little bit. He's wearing this little metal cuirass and has on his back a sword and in his and on a belt on his side a hook and line, which he has managed to retract and keep seemingly safe there. Um, what a handsome little man. He's, he's a good <laughs> bee. Um, he steps forward and bows deeply to the two of you and then bows to the uh, to Cabarex. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm Cedric of Spruce Tuck. I'm here to send out the formal invite to the caravan. Before, we were looking for those interested, and you have now been accepted one of the six slots. Both of you. And then she gestures the two of you on the uh, pillows. With your uncle's blessing, of course, great and mighty Cabarax, as he bows. Cabarax looks down at him, and you can see his art, his, he's doing that thing that weasels do, where they're debating the next words that they're going to say. Not that they're, not that they are um, unsure, but they're trying to figure out the best way to say what they're going to say. Um... And after pausing for a moment, Cabarax, uh, and here's the full zoomable picture for the chief. Um, you, Cabarax, uh, slowly looks down at him, and if they go, as this is both a skilled scout and a skilled warrior you are taking from me, I have your promise of amnesty for people. Cedric slowly nods. Yes. You should be safe to come. You can move in if you would like. We will keep you and we will set up a new settlement, a smaller settlement within the mouse territories. For weasels who wish to leave. You can stay there until the new settlement is made and then move at your discretion. Ah, mighty Cabrax. When the Dark Heather, or your new Heather, is finished being created, we will send you in an expedition of your own, with a mouse guard assisting you as well. But only if you're willing to. You may stay here if you like. And Cabarax, I have no idea why I would want to stay among my arrogant brethren. Especially when the Overlord would slay me if they knew of this deal. It slowly looks to uh, both of you two. Which is why I have called you here early. You are to gather your things and leave. Now. There is a gathering of Lords and Overlords. While we meet, you will slink out. And you will be undiscovered. If you are, I cannot protect you, and I will pretend I know not what you are doing. But if you are caught with a mouse, they will figure it out. Do you understand? Delilah would nod. I just kind of look at the little mouse in front of me, with my head kind of like cocked. And then after like a long pause, look at my uncle and like finally make eye contact and just give him a curt nod. Good. This will save our family. Very soon, the overlords will begin likely to cull those who they don't particularly like. Seeing as how I prefer wealth to slaughter, I imagine we will be next. What you do will save our line. And in exchange, you will save them. Don't expect to ever come back here. The next time you see me, it will be with you in your new land. If 
you have any goodbyes to make. Now is the time. Do them swiftly. You have but a few hours, a few hours before things get difficult. Go. Be swift and be safe, my kin. And you, then he turns and snaps at one of the uh, servants who immediately just sort of like jangles where he was slowly cutting cheese and just drops one of the knives, just immediately scrambles it, grabs it up, turns his brown head to look. Yes, sir? We're going to need more cheese than that. We're serving like, what, four overlords? You're going to need a whole wheel. But uh, you told me never to go that deep into the into the cellar. That's, that's a lot of food you don't want me to. I want you to touch it now. Now go. And he like <laughs> takes his full of wine ewer and throws it at the guy's head and it bonks off of his head. And then he's just, right, sorry, master. And this immediately like slinks away, like practically slithering out of the room at, at speed. Uh, to which Cedric kind of winces as he sees that. Uh, with your with your permission, my lord, I will take my leave. I will wait on the surface, or if you'd like, I can go with one of them. And uh, immediately the weasel leans down and clears at Cedric. You will do no such thing. Go to the surface. Wait. You will not go with them. What are you trying to do? Get them killed? Be lucky that I tolerate you here in the first place. Now go. I expect a runner from Gwendolyn at some point soon. Yes, my lord, of course. Have a lovely day. He slowly walks out of the room backwards, as you can see, still facing the uh, large white weasel lord, who is easily uh, three times his size and sort of bowing and then looking at both of you two as he walks backwards, nods a little bit more respectfully and a little less over the top. Seemingly more genuine reaction. And disappears out from the door. And the Weasel Lord Church reclines there on the couch of pillows. Watches you two. So we won't be returning. Likely not. Slowly uh, adjusts himself and stretches, and you can hear him crack a couple of th- throwing his very back. Look, I like you two. Great deal. The Dark Heather's no longer safe for those of us who refuse to fall sway on the most powerful of it. You will not answer to me. There is a captain to answer to. She will be your lord in the immediate turn. You will recognize her. Be one of only six weasels in the entire expedition. You will be outnumbered. I leave it up to you how you handle it. But needless to say, what we need is a new Heather to live with it. Whatever your plans, fell or fair, I'm sure they come to fruition. Don't descend on my house as a plague. And try to be safe. Oh. Tell me, little one, are you a war? Well, you're saying that to the mouse? Yeah. Uh, the mouse is, like, was slowly looking, was slowly, like, slinking out of the door at the time you say that. And he pauses and pops his head back around the corner, sort of looks behind him, realizing he's standing in a hallway in the dark heather where at any point weasels might emerge into. And he sort of steps back into the doorway, looking significantly uncomfortable to be back in the chamber that he was just about to leave. Um, I... Yes, I am. And there are others like you along our journey. Many, yes. 
the god sends nearly 200 conscripts on this expedition. And the Hedgems have given 20 of their best. We will not be lacking for strength of arms. Then we will not be all alone. The uncle nods. Fair. If you have any questions, now's your time to ask them. Make it quick. I... I have a million, but... I think it would just be better to... learn from doing. To look over at Dukan. I'm going to say so out of mother and father. In case we don't return. There are few words I would exchange. Okay. The uncle watches quietly, letting this play out. Slowly he stands up and begins to slink towards the back of the room and uh, pauses before he goes. He's lo he looks like he's heading towards like a beaded curtain in the back. And then he sort of turns and slowly looks at both of you two. It'll do fine. The blood, after all, we do not fall easily. Go, find wealth and riches. Find great things and secure them for my line. And don't let that captain run roughshod. We're going somewhere new to establish ourselves. The last thing I need is to arrive there and find myself under the command of yet another mad overlord. Keep them honest. And if need be, and he looks over at Cedric, who is locking eyes with his little eyes, Cedric's little eyes narrow a little bit as he's speaking. Feel free to replace the leadership elements of the Weasel Caravan. If you can prove your mettle enough. I don't mind serving under you. With an understanding. Good day. Then he turns and walks through the beaded curtain and it sort of jingles behind him. And you can hear the soft jangling of his gold laden it really it's not even like gold laden it's really that his ring mail is actually made of hundreds of mouse coin and they're all just used like chain mail like, he literally has like hundreds of coins as his chain mail. um you hear them jangling down into the distance as he disappears I believe there may be very many servants in our future. Both the kind I'm used to dealing with, and others. I believe you are right, brother. Let's make haste. Dally no longer. So, where do you go from here, folks? Um, well, like Delilah mentioned, she is going to say goodbye to her parents, in case she never sees them again. And, um, she doesn't really have a lot of other people that she's close with, enough with to risk being found out, so, um, that's all she's gonna do, and she's gonna go find Dukan so they can leave. Okay, Dukan. What are your tasks? What are you doing? I'm probably going to say goodbye to my parents, to, to our parents as well, and then just leave. Okay. Sounds good. We'll meet so, Cedric on the surface and be on our way. Alright. 
as you step out of the room, you can see Cedric is already climbing his way up the sides of the Dark Heather, slowly hand over fist, not even trying to use any of the stairwells because there is a not insignificant chance there may or may not be weasels there. Uh, thankfully, the Dark Heather's architecture is very much Baroque in its design. There's plenty of handholds and wrought iron poles all over the place for him to climb. So, you get along, and eventually you find the chambers of your mother and your father, who, by the way, are the... The mother is the one on the left with the leather plate and the spear, and the father is the one with the what appears to be gold scale mail on the sword. Um, both of those, the sword and the scale mail, were gifts from your uncle, as many of the weasels of your clan bear. Turns out that, for the most part, your uncle seems to like bragging through other members of his clan and bloodline as well, of his extravagant wealth, with equally extravagant gifts for his kin. Um, and your father is smart enough to wear that, if only because it gives him authority around others. In truth, your parents aren't much higher in rank than conscripts, but because they are related to a tunnel wall, they have slightly higher standing and are often given birth even by soldiers and captains. You don't want to piss off a tunnel lord by killing his brother or his sister. So, your mother and your father have always been relatively, as far as weasels go, peaceful. They haven't really done too much harm. Though they have fought in the weasel wars, they never really talk about their exploits. Slaughter was never really the hallmark of your family line, and... Your mother and your father seem to encompass that by living comfortably and contentedly within their own relative needs. I will not pretend that your family was excited at the prospect of maybe never seeing you again, but they deferred to the overlord uncle as should be done in this circumstance. Um, as you enter the chambers, your father and your mother are both sitting in a seating not unlike the one you just left, but much less grandiose and with far fewer and far less high quality pillows than the ones you just left. They are both appear to be snacking on a small tray of what appears to be grain and bread, along with what appears to be some bread from some recent catch and slaughter, likely given down by a soldier who slayed it on behalf of them and sort of been passing the meat around. The mother and father look up as you enter and both smile. The mother just sort of cranes her head. So, this is it, is it? We are to pause. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, you're fine. You, you already started. By all means. <laughs> you can just talk fast. I was going to say, uh, <laughs> we are departing. Yes. Both of you two, then. Yes, the both of us. Well, make sure you dress warm. Here, let me get you something for the road. And she stands up and walks over towards a, looks like a wooden, uh, some sort of like large wooden box. She opens it up and inside you can see there's a bunch of salt and a bunch of salted and cured meats and she gets a little leather bag, begins to stuff it full of salt and what appears to be some sort of jerky, likely from a bird, maybe even like a squirrel or something relatively small. Um, could be like even a mouse. Uh, meat is sort of given amongst the people in this particular family line. They don't always tell you what it is, uh, but you have tasted mouse before. Absolutely. Whether you killed it or not, that's up to you folks. Um, she's slowly stuffing it full of herbs and salt and what appears to be jerkies. The father slowly rises, and he's as, about as old as your uncle is, as Cabarax. Sort of has to use his sword as like a, not quite a walking cane. He has old injuries from the Weasel War. He still nurses to this day. So he uses it almost like a crutch walks over towards you, both of the two of you, 
and puts both his hands on the sword and smiles. Ah, you two do us great honor. I'm grateful to have such dutiful children. I will miss you both. There's a small little sad smile. Listen, sure we will miss you. Care to give your father one last hug? And sort of shrugs and you can see like just his eyes sparkle a little bit. He's always been a bit of a softy, even by weasel standards. Delilah would. Thank you very much for being honorable and understanding. So he wraps one hand around you and looks over at uh, Dukan and kind of just like, like with the other hand that's not around uh, Delilah and sort of gestures like, a, do you want to hug? Question mark. I skitter yeah. in there. Okay. He wraps the other hand around you, gives a pat, and sort of pulls you both in, squeezes you a little bit. And sort of puts you back at arm's length and smiles. Ah, oh, look at me, sentimental in my old age. You'll do fine, and we'll join you soon enough, once the voyage is made. Until then, your uncle has told us that we will be heading for Lock Haven ourselves soon. As I understand, the mouse matriarch, the guard, has established a place for us to rest. I can't imagine it's more than an encampment. We'll likely have to do for a few years, but it will be safer than the Dark Heather once it is known that you're gone. Honestly, I don't mind the accommodations. And the mother from over by the uh, box chimes in. Oh, but your uncle absolutely will gripe about it every inch of the way. And she takes what seems like the last thing, puts like a little, like a small onion bulb and sticks it in there and cinches it up and waddles over. I can't wait. Every morning it's going to be, oh, the inconvenience. Oh, the lack of any kind of comfort. He's going to be groaning about it the entire way. More shattery than a mockingbird. And he holds it out the uh, pouch to whichever of the two of you want to grab it. She doesn't mind. Um, which, honestly, I would kill to be on that expedition too, but I'm not getting much younger myself. This is the endeavor of young folk, not your elders. Be safe. She leans in and she kisses both of you on the cheek uh, in that sort of like motherly, you don't get a say in the matter, I'm a freaking kiss you whether you like it or not. <laughs> um, both on the forehead, one on, one on the other, and sort of puts the satchel on your hands. I added a little bit of extra jerky at there. At the very bottom, there's some rosemary if you need to rehydrate it and cook it. So it should be pretty good. We better uh, go get ready ourselves. Thank you, Mother. She smiles. Thank you, both of you. You're wonderful. And I hope we see you again soon. Now go. Your uncle's going to have a conniption fit if he catches you inside the halls any longer. Thank you. I will make our family proud. Your father grins. Always do. Both of you. You see, that is if I won't. I would crumble. <laughs> Wait, say what? You see, that is if I won't. <laughs> Yeah. So I would just kind of grumble at him. Uh. <laughs> we all have our place. It takes more than a sword to win a war, son. It takes gathering and scouts and harvests and trains of resources. Your uncle says he's, your father says he's slowly walking the back room, waving his head from side to side as he does it. Clearly enjoying being your goofy father for like the couple of minutes more he gets to be. But in a moment, is a blade that ends life, and not a quill. Depends who's holding the quill, 
and he goes through like the beaded curtain at the back of the room. You still have much to learn, Brother Dan. Mother peeks her head out from behind the curtain. Be safe. Love you. And then she just sort of disappears behind the curtain quickly. That's the last time you see your parents, at least. So. Adventure awaits. <laughs> Huzzah! Um, all right. Um, it's been an so hour. Both... Do we want to take a break and then come back in on Natalie? I'm down with that. That sounds perfect. Wait, so. okay. Don't go anywhere, anybody. We're going to take a quick 5 to 10, and then we will return with more Mouse Guard.
Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for waiting. I appreciate it. Hope y'all are having a good evening. Omni, what's going on in the land of vice? Yes. So, as we, uh, as we sort of left off on our hedgehog family, a similar scene is playing out across the territories. In a distant place, far from that which we've seen so far. This, if I can get this to work. Let's see, okay. This would be good, finally. Natalie, why don't you introduce us to your character? Okay, um, my character is a mouse. Uh, her oh. name is Diana the Small, because uh, even for a female mouse, she is a little bit on the smaller side, very petite. Um, she's somewhat of a modest mouse. Uh-huh. <laughs> <is. All laughs> right. right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she she prefers to wear maybe a bit more clothing than some of the other mice be might be wearing. Um, not sure how much to reveal about her. As much as you feel comfortable, I don't mind surprising anyone, including me, so. Okay. Um, I will just say that uh, she has recently become somewhat of an orphan. Okay. That's Poor baby. Cool. Reveal more as we go on. Precious baby Perfect. mouse. <laughs> so, Sienna, you have grown up in the relatively idyllic situ the relatively idyllic locale of Ivydale. And Ivydale are a beautiful place, even by the standards of many of the territories of Nice. If I may give a quick little interlude onto Ivydale itself, as soon as I can get this thing to open to the proper page, because it seems like there's a million and a half of those. Uh, da -da 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 -da. This also, by the way, should tell you how extensive this setting is. I can literally get lost looking for details on settings. There we go. So, if you could actually just stay down, that'd be great, buddy. Okay, thanks. So, let's see. It's going to be me. Wavy down. Natalie, just did such a good job. Yeah, no, I so didn't want to interrupt, but she's so cute. <laughs> it's Thank gorgeous. You. It's really gorgeous. I said that she really, like, I really feel like she found some part of, like, some truth to the universe in that shit, you know what I mean? It's just so adorable. I love it so much. Oh, straight up. Um, so. Let's see. Okay. So, Ivydale is unique in the mass territories. Like many places, it is built on a rather beautiful sort of kind of, uh, outdoorsy sort of environment. Many of the mass territories, their structures, their homes are built deep within locations. But Ivydale specific, Ivydale is, they exist with a large area overgrown with ivy, hence the name. The entire place is kind of a thicket within a large field where they do much of their harvesting. Um, Ivydale itself actually is built into the bottoms of the plants of these thick overgrown thickets. It's dense enough where most predators just can't be bothered, but as far as the mice go, they can come and please as they like, leading to a relatively decent standard of living. They actually don't mind most predators, unlike many of the other settlements. And again, uh, much love to Dave Peterson for all this beautiful art in this book. It is truly gorgeous. He doesn't even have mm. art for Ivydale, and it's still immediately easy to find something that works just as well. Um, oh, I didn't realize you posted something. Sorry, I still had them. Yeah, you're that. good. You're good. Um, I will continue to sing David Peterson's praises uh, for, until the day I die. Um, so, Ivydale itself is a very hardworking town. Harvest most of the grain in the territories. All of Ivydale's residents, young, old, male, and female, separate husks from grain during harvest time. Some of the fibers harvested are wool, cloth, and other times into, you know, sometimes for clothing, but often for tarps and other things, batchel-like bags, and uh, even insulation. Sometimes they also use it for the sails of ships, but that's usually exported elsewhere, since Ivydale is relatively landlocked. 
And by relatively, I mean, it's as landlocked as it comes. It's literally like in the dead middle of the continent. You're actually one of the closest settlements to Lockheed. And hence another reason why people of Ivy have a rather idyllic and comfortable lifestyle. They don't feel too threatened by predators since within just a couple of days walks, you know, like less, really a day's walk, you can get to Lockhaven <laughs> with little effort. Um, oftentimes, tool mending, sharpening, baking, milling, weaving baskets, these are all things that Ivydale is known for. Uh, it's really more of a town than a full-on city, but it's a rather well-off town. And you've lived here your entire life, uh, and it's been very comfortable. So I'm going to ask you, did you join the Guard specifically for this expedition? Or have you instead joined the Guard prior at some point for your own motivations before the expedition was even a blink in the eye of Gwendolyn? Say I had already joined the Guard because I was looking for some type of adventure. And then um, while in the Guard, I heard about this expedition and thought, well, that sounds like a lot more fun and adventure than what I'm currently doing, which is probably mostly drills and training and, you know, not actual adventuring. Yeah. For the most part, um, being a Guard for as long as you have been, because you are a patrol Guard, you've been there long enough to have at least a modicum of... Uh, the modicum of respect amongst the other guards mice. So, as a result, you have seen deployment. You have been sent to do tasks, but I don't think you've ever really seen actual combat yet. And if you did, it was minimal. Weirdly, Ivydale wasn't really affected by the regiment. Many settlements sent soldiers and their own troops, but the guard also had to allocate some guards mice to their hometowns and to other locales to protect them in the event that during the Regiment War, the fighting spilled out beyond Lockhaven or multiple fronts open. You were probably waiting in Ivydale five years ago with a small group of mouse guard, like maybe four to five of them, waiting to see signs of black smoke and heavily armored hedgehogs bearing black powder or diesels. And it just never came. And when you came back to Lockhaven, you would have seen signs of mass slaughter. Many mice died. Hedgehogs and weasels. It was a truly horrible battle. As dangerous and as lethal as any of the ones from the Weasel Wars. Which, I'm not sure if your character is... Do you think your character saw the Weasel Wars? It was about, at this point, almost 20 years ago. No, she, she would have been... Uh a small child at that point. That is very fair. She is 30. So yes, you would have probably seen it and thought of accounts of the Weasel Wars by certain veterans. But in this case, no. Uh, this would have been truly a lot to take in. And you would have missed all of it, by the way. You would have been hearing tales of heroism and even some rather strange stories from the front of seemingly supernatural events occur on the battlefield. A thing which you've only heard in like tall tales and legends told in Ivy Dale's one or two inns where occasionally the odd mouse might get particularly drunk and spin a yarn for the entire tavern in hopes that maybe the barkeep might forgive their uh, extensive debt in exchange for a good story. But what you heard that sounded like people really thought it was real. Um, it has been years, though, and you've heard of this expedition, and you know it's a couple days from now until you're gone, until you have to leave. So what are you doing with the last couple days within this place? I'm probably taking care of my affairs since I don't have plans to come back. I imagine my main goal right now would be selling my family a uh, bread shop that I no longer have use for. Okay. So is that your goal for the session? Or would you have another um, goal for the session you would like to go with? I'd say my main goal is 
getting there and getting accepted. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to show up and they're going to say they already have enough people or if I'm too low of a rank or what the situation is going to be. All right. Excellent. So, yes, you've probably heard of the expedition and knew that they were accepting guard mice. And that anyone who does want to go, they need be there a day before the expedition takes off. To be both counted and to ensure that they can actually get a spot. And from what you've heard, there are even a couple of adventure seekers within Ivydale who seem to like the idea of the expedition. Though from your experience with many of these folk, they know not what they're looking for. They may understand the source of adventure. Many of them have talk of how fun it'll be to go on an adventure and come back. Seems the permanence of the expedition's departure hasn't dawned on a lot of the youth yet. So, you're trying to sell your family's uh, bake shop. Your bakery. So, why don't you describe uh, your family's bakery and also your parents? For us. Hey, um, the bread shop has been in our family for a couple generations, probably since they settled in Ivydale. Um, it's a small, modest sized shop, nothing too special or flashy, you know, just a place to bake and sell bread. Probably in a fairly modest neighborhood. You know, we're not on the rich side of town, but we're not also in the slums or anything. Uh, my my parents uh, both have unfortunately passed away. My mother when I was young, and then my father recently. So, having no other close immediate family in the area... I've decided to cut ties with the town and go find adventure and something more exciting than baking bread for a living. Very fair. So, as you are sort of going about the town, you want to try to sell your family's bakery. And if that's the case, then let's talk about how do you... Do you have a particular person you wanted to sell it to, or anyone you think that you might trust, or are you just sort of trying to sell it generally to anyone who will purchase it? I'd like it to go to someone that I know isn't going to perhaps tear it down and just rebuild. Okay, perfect. I'm not sure if I have this specific person in mind. Okay, no worries. That's all I was asking. So, if that's the case, then... I just need to make sure this is working properly, at least my dice pools need to be certain. So, here we go. Oh, jeez. Takes, for, takes forever to get to you. Okay, so then. In this instance, we have... Uh, so, you want to try to sell your baker, which means that you need to go and get yourselves a... You need to find someone who's willing to buy it. That's the case, then. I'm going to say, given extensive skill set, you're probably going to see if you can do perhaps a persuader. So this is going to be where you will be equal to the rating of your, di uh, the rating of your dice, uh, the rating of your skill, which in this case for persuader is two. And if you have any wises you would like to use, which I don't think you have too many at the moment, uh, thunderstorm, flash or wise, you could even use haggler if you'd like. I'd be willing to let you do that, um, to add those two pools together. You'll roll a number of d6 equal to the pool, and you are looking for four pluses. Okay, so how many... Uh, I'm confused. How many d6 am I rolling? Uh, equal to the rating of the skill you're using. Okay. So, persuader, it would be two. Okay. Got it. Okay. Six. Excellent. All right. So specifically, though, the way this works is you look at each die and you count the number of successes you have. Now, your successes work like this. You roll your dice. You want to see how many successes you have. If you have any ones, they are known as traitors, and they subtract from your success. Oh, no. I've got a one. Yes. 
So there are, this means that you have made no success, but you have also had no loss as you succeeded and then a traitor betrayed you. So you aren't failing the test. You're just not, you're not failing critically anyway. Mm -hmm. You're just, uh, you haven't succeeded. So you've been spending a fair few, I'm willing to say days, even weeks looking for a buyer. Despite the relative, or in fact, probably because of the relative prosperity of the territories, many of the mice of Ivydale seem quite content with the amount of wealth and resources they have. Ivydale is a small town. People don't really need too much. And many of them are quite comfortably positioned, again, being so close to Lockhaven. And so you coming to their doorstep and offering them a relatively good deal, a, a relatively good investment, Many of them are really finding themselves not interested. They are content with what they have. Why risk themselves with an adventure? Um, there is, however, after yeah. searching all over, one person left in town you could try. But what were you going to say? I can what? I didn't hear what you said. Oh, I was saying, what were you going to say? Oh, I, I don't know. I think I was at least talking to her cat. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I was. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I was on my desk trying to fuck with things. That is very fair. And a big mood. Um, sorry, I thought it was me. <laughs> you good? Uh, okay, then. So, if that's the case, then, there is one person, however, so far in the village, you haven't tried that you're interested in giving a shot at. Which would be your scene... That would probably be... I would say your mentor, Karen. Um, Karen is the baker who, in fact, taught you how to bake in town. Your family taught you a lot. She taught you how to do good, how to bake well. Your family is really good at making large amounts of baked goods, but she taught you how to make something fantastic. And as a result, your goods have sort of helped your family's bakery the course of the past couple of years. Even when you went into the guard, your family continued to make the things you made after you taught them a thing or two. So your family and Karen have always been relatively close, if only through you. She is a relatively wizened old mouse, but she's always open, it seems, to try new things. Despite being on in years, a true old fur, she has the heart of a tender, and she's always intrigued. Ventures. This seems like the sort of thing would be right up her alley if you're willing to give it a shot. Okay. I would like to go talk to her about it. Okay. So you go and head down the head through Ivydale. It's a relatively idyllic day. Wind is blowing nice and cool. The dog days of summer are far away. It's really just sort of getting free of winter's grasp. And so, while the air is still cool, it has a pleasant uh, tinge to it. It's not the biting cold of the north as you're used to in winter. Um, and you can see, sitting in front of her relatively small home, one story, but that does not belie the rather significant wealth she's accrued over the course of her years, and the past few years especially, great plenty, uh, is Karen, old mouse lady, sort of crouched over, sitting on a rocking chair and smoking a pipe, as she's often seen. She waves as she sees you approach. Oh, uh, Sienna, hello, welcome. By all means, have a seat. Would you like some leaf? Just got it in. It's delicious. Sure, why not? <laughs> and uh, she offers you an exceptionally long mm -hmm. that seems to be made out of one, it, it looks like it was made out of a twig that was whittled down. The thing's, like, comically large. We're talking, like, <laughs> as long as what would be, like, one of our arms. Um, she just offers it over to you. And, uh... <laughs> it, it I doesn't... Really struggle to hold on to it well, because I'm a small mouse. Yeah. <laughs> She's pretty small, too, but it's, it's light, so it's not too hard to handle. Just a little awkward. And as you hold it up and puff, the smell is actually not too bad. It's a very sweet kind of tobacco smell. Not like the very grotesque kind of uh, 
smoke that you get off of like relatively low quality leaf. This is a rather pleasant uh, smell to it, a good aftertaste. And she sort of uh, holds her hand back for the pipe. So I imagine you didn't come here to sample whatever I could get off the cart lately. What are you here for, my friend? <laughs> oh man! Oh my! That was uh, quite the quite the tobacco you have there, or leaf. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, it's not all tobacco. I can't really get too much into it. I'm still <laughs> getting it cleared with the town council. Let's see. Let's see, um, I. Here because, uh, as you know, I will be leaving town soon to join an expedition where I will likely be moving to my new home. So. Ah, hmm? I'll miss you something fierce. No. You're lovely to have around, my friend. I will miss you too, Karen. Um, as you know, my family has our bread had our bread shop, but I don't have much use for it anymore. Hmm. And you're hoping that someone may purchase it and put it to good use? At this point, I would be happy just to know that it is going into good hands. <laughs> okay. Uh, for the record, that is Karen of Ivydale. Just Aww. your reference. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you again for all this amazing art, David Peterson. Uh, seriously. Yeah. It's so wholesome. Seriously, go buy his book. Buy his <laughs> book. Um, <laughs> I believe he made all that art. That is... He's prolific AF. Um, so, and he's great. So, as he's, as she uh, looks at you and puffs a little bit more smoke and blows a little ring, uh, so, I'm getting on in years, Yana. I'm always interested in one more run, but I don't have many winters left to watch that place. So if I go into it, I'm going to need someone to help. Someone to take it over when I'm gone, or else it's just going to get overrun plants gone. Mm -hmm. So if I find someone to uh, assist you, perhaps become your apprentice, then you would be willing to take the place from me? Most assuredly. If you could find someone, I'd be quite interested in it. Uh, so there is... There is one family that might be of help to you, but... Oh, I know you hate that boy so very much, and with good reason. He is a bit of a jackass. You better not be referring to whom I think you are. So, Tofran might be a little oh, jerk. You say his name. <laughs> you say his name. But I know that you like his sister. Artie, you two have been friends for some time. Tofren has no love for the baking. Artin but... has no love for anything. She literally does a sort of like a eh, kind of like gesture. Um, <laughs> you and Tofren had a great deal of animosity with one another. Um, in part because Tofren, ever since you were just the smallest of pups has been a terror in the village. Mm -hmm. Tofram's the kind of bully that never grew up, and in fact, their years of childish bullying have in fact confirmed that might makes right, and that you should totally listen to everything he says because he's totally got the right idea, and you're stupid for questioning. So he went from being a little jerk to being an arrogant old jerk mm -hmm. um, as the years have gone on. He's never done anything particularly truly cruel but he's certainly never been kind and he's thrown many a verbal barb at you and your family even in the passing of your mother and father he still can't seem to keep his mouth shut about 
the even the dead don't seem to get respect in his eyes. So you probably have even had like a couple of fisticuffs with him in a bar <laughs> once or twice in town. Um, however, uh, Tofram is the brother of your good friend Arden, who cannot stand him either. Uh, and she spent many of the same four years you did, baking and hanging out with your family, learning the trades. So it makes sense. Fortunately, you do have to deal with Tofran to get through to Arden, and uh, likely really? through the parents. Well, suppose it is worth it to know that my family shop will go into good hands. Very well. I will do it. <laughs> Excellent. Mm -hmm. Come back to me when they're ready to go in vest jointly. I'd be more than happy to drop the contracts for them. I'm sure the mayor wouldn't mind. And she takes another couple puffs at her, uh, really more like gums, at her, uh, at her pipe as she's speaking. And, uh, well, good luck, my friend. Oh, thank you. So, um, if you want to go to their shared estate, which is, estate is the formal term. This is a town, and their estate is a single-story family house, which is kind of a little bit sprawling, but it's not, like, massive. They're not hyper-wealthy. They just happen to be grain gatherers, like many people in the region, and that is a bit of a big enterprise, so you need a couple of to store grain and to husk it and do all the other lovely tasks with it. Um, out front, you can see Arden on the porch of the thing, which is made largely out of wood, uh, which lumber for a mouse is often split twigs, but in some cases they'll even fell small trees and make enough lumber to make an entire town out of it. So the wood here looks like true 2 by 4 style wood. A little bit less uh, pretty, but polished after years of care. And you can see, standing on the deck, is this little mouse slowly shuffling dirt off with a broom. The clear and obvious blonde hair of Art visible at quite a distance. She doesn't notice you're approaching. Arton, my good friend. <laughs> she slowly turns around. Oh! Oh, dear! Sienna, I didn't think I'd see you again! Hello! And she bounds over, uh, quite ready to see her friend at least one more time. Um, what can I do for you? It's, it's been a bit. It has. Um, oh, you know, I could not depart without seeing you. Um, Thank I have... You. Of course. Um, I have some things I wish to discuss. Oh? Mm -hmm. oh what what of? Mm -hmm. Well, since I could not convince you to join me on this adventure and leave this town, um, <laughs> I thought perhaps uh, you might be interested in taking over my family's shop. With the aid of um, Tom, um, Karen, of course. Oh! Oh, oh wow, oh my. Then she like slowly sits down on the porch, putting the down. Oh, it really is real, isn't it? it kind of hasn't sunk in yet. <laughs> yes, of course, I'd, I'd be honored. Uh, I could talk to my, talk to my parents about it and we can work out a deal. Uh, we'll see, father can be a little Mm, skin flinted when it comes to this kind of thing, but I, I'm, I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Let me see if I can't find him. Father! And she literally turns around and just like shouts from the house, and you're going to hear a thud and an oof from inside, <laughs> and a clanging of metal as two pans seem to fall off what appear it has to be pans or pots, off of what must be a shelf, onto what must be from the dull thuds, his head. Huh. And <laughs> inside you can just hear him groan, Ugh. Arden, you're going to kill me. You keep doing that. Just come and say hi. And slowly walking outside is an old man known as Arden. 
Um, the whole family seems to have this naming convention. It's pretty common for it to be sort of a way to tie family together, have similar of uh, immediate names. But uh, his blonde hair is a little bit paler as he gets on in age. And his clothing is very rough and primitive as a farmer's would be, but it's rugged and it's well kept. He's a man of pride, clearly both his trade and his appearance. Uh, and he seems to be all the more perturbed by the giant red welt on his head now from where what must have been a cast iron pan landed on. He's adorable. Oh. Amazing how you just have all this art. Oh. <laughs> I'm literally pulling it out of just the ether. There's so many mouse guard characters. Like literally, I will never run out of them. Um, so Auden uh, smiles and bows. Sienna, I should have known. It's the only reason Arden can't be bothered to come and see me to get my attention. What can I do for you, girl? Uh, well, first of all, I came to say goodbye to everyone. I've known your family for quite some time, and most of you have been good to me. <laughs> Minus your asshole son. <laughs> He lets that slide, like, with a grin. <laughs> he's not, he's used to you and his son not getting along. He knows there's no love lost there. He doesn't hold it against you. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. I, it's been a pleasure. Truly, it has been. And your parents were very sweet. And it's been an honor to see their daughter grow. I appreciate the kind words. And I appreciate yours, though. It certainly sounds like the beginning of a sales pitch. Should I sit down for this? <laughs> uh, no sales pitch. Just a small-ish favor I wish to ask. Small is relative. And he sits down on the porch next to his daughter. Let's hear it. And uh, Arden kind of just like, go on. First of all, I would like to say there would be no cost to you. This would all be pro bono, as it were. Um, as you're aware, my family shop is in town, and I am departing town. Therefore, I have a bit of a dilemma as what to do with the shop. Hmm. I've decided I much, would much rather see it go into the hands of people I know and trust than a stranger for gold. Oh, uh, she. So, you're telling me all I have to do is agree to watch over the place and help tend it and see my family go towards it. Well could be a great asset to you. It served my family well. As you know, we lived a quite comfortable life. And I'm sure the governor will be wringing his hands about me controlling the grain and the bakery. Yes, I do rather like that idea. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see that person sweat. That mouse is such a little prick. And he just sort of like, you can see him like chewing a little bit of cut out of the side of his mouth. Mm -hmm. Like grinding down on it as he's talking about it. And uh, Arden just sort of like reaches over and slaps him on the shoulder. Dad, stop it. Just because the governor taxes you doesn't mean he's evil. The governor taxes me more. The governor taxes you more because you make more. He taxes me more than that. It's not going to build half this town off our profits and didn't build much of my own. Fine. Anyway, I'm, I could endlessly rant about that, man. I'm on board with it. But... Since you're leaving town, I have a counter offer. Mm -hmm. I will do this for you, but in exchange, I may need assistance with a certain task. And you can't say no. Do you can't say to, no. Do I get to know what the task is before I agree to all this? Yes, but it is quite a... Uh, dependent on you doing this for me to say yes. And Arden just kind of like shoves her father. Father, come on now. Seriously, say yes. I will. This is important. And what is this task you request? Well, I know you hate my son. Something fierce. In a way that most can't 
bother to be bothered about, but I understand your animosity. However, Tofrin is going to be going on that expedition too. The little rat. He heard that I was going and he just had to join himself. He never made any mention of wanting to leave town. When did this happen? And the father sort of like winces a little bit at that. So, you know how Tofen's always had a bit of a, Tofen's had a bit of a habit of hitting the pub a little too often. And well, I'm cutting him off and I kind of have to. He's been drinking like a little booze hound and I can't handle that forever. So, to settle his debts, he is taking the coin of the guard. When they establish the territories, he will return. It will be many years, but it's either that or he sort of like looks over at uh, Arden and she shakes her head. Or my brother is going to have his legs broken. Because he was, you say. Yes, unfortunately, Tofen, Tofen was an idiot and took a bit of a, a bit of a loan from some rather less she, less savory characters in Shaleboro. Mm-hmm. Shaleboro is a lovely place. However, when your primary export is shale and how cold it is and how good it is preserving things. My brother basically made a deal with people who bury him alive if he doesn't pay them, and he hasn't made enough money to pay them back. By serving in the guard, he gets a stipend. The only positions available at the moment in the guard are on the expeditions. So he's going to be an expedition guard. He's already received minimal training. The Ivydale guard, little there is anyhow. The father shrugs. I pay my fair share. To- can't muster more than 30 mice in one place. But he'll take anyone who can swing the sword the right way, especially since all he'll need to do is walk with the caravan. My son is safe, and he pays his debts, and I may even get to see him again one day. So then what does this all have to do with me? Well, my son still needs to get to the caravan in order to get on the caravan. He is going to depart later tomorrow, which means he'll need an escort. Not that I don't trust my son. Actually, no, it's exactly that. I don't trust my son to not get into trouble in the day's walk to locking. I certainly don't blame you for that. So you wish me to Join him on the journey there. Make sure he stays out of trouble. Is that it? Pretty much. Make sure he gets there safe and sound. Keep him from getting robbed by any highwaymen. Take him or get lost in the pub before he can get on the road. Just make sure he gets there. The guard will sort him out after that. Who knows? He might even get lucky and get to stay behind and earn his coin in luck if he gets there fast enough. Wouldn't that be ideal? As much as it pains me to agree to these terms, I suppose it is only a one day's journey. I should get used to the idea of him possibly accompanying me the rest of the way. Very well. I agree. Excellent. And tomorrow when you head out, Stop by here, head the farm up, and we'll send you along with a little bit of grain to go with your journey. And my erstwhile troublemaker side. And you have a deal. And he stands up and offers to shake your hand. Mm -hmm. I do, I say, I add. He better be on his best behavior, or I can't promise I won't smack him around a a bit. He grins and shakes your hand back, and then slowly turns around to go back into the house. 
Oh, I'm sure you'll give him a good thrashing if he acts like a little bit of an ass. It's fine. Do what you have to. Just get him there safely. You have to carry him in there in a stretcher. I'm okay with it. And the door clanks behind him. Where on earth did I put that knife? And then you hear a couple more thuds and clanks and another shout from inside of frustration and pain. Stop putting the heaviest pants in the highest shows. You're just going to brain me. And you can hear one of the servants inside, one of the farmhands, irritably shouting back some of the lines. You don't want them on the bottom. You don't want them on the top. Just put a nail in the wall. No, it's, it's I'll fall into that. Now cut my hand. It's just a mess. Just don't put it there. There's a shed, shed. And just like in the slowly fading in the distance. It's mm-hmm. argument going deeper into the house. As uh, slowly Arden stands up and smiles. It's been an honor, Sienna. Safe journeys. I thank you and hope that someday perhaps our paths will cross again. It may yet. Who knows? If you manage to actually make that new place to live, I'll be one of the first on the boat. I'm sure my father will be right behind. And maybe you can send Tom from back. I well, I think that would be a wonderful idea. Take care. She gives you a big hug. I hug her back and bittersweetly part ways. Perfect. <laughs> so let's leap all the way back from Ivydale in back to the Dark Heather and the entrance towards Spruce Tuck with our friends Derek and Elise. So, you two, I imagine, probably spent the rest of your mornings packing and then slipping out as soon as you could. Am I correct in that assumption? Indeed. Okay. So, if that's the case then, let us open up your character sheets. See, you two are going to need to sneak out of the Dark Heather. And the good news is the Dark Heather is a very good place to sneak in. It's dark, it's quiet, and even it's by the standards of the And it's Heather. And it's Heather. It's full of plants. Um, fun fact, Heathers are actually a, Dark Heather is actually a flower. Um, it's named for the flower patterns that are s- striated and sculpted into the tiling all around the interior of the Dark Heather. Um... So, nerd. Say, yeah, mm. sorry, <laughs> sorry, but not sorry. Um, so, you're trying to escape this place, and while that is quite doable, it's not easy. Um, I'm going to say both of you two need to either you two need to make me a scout roll. Okay. Don't have scout. Which uh, not both of you do, from what I can tell. Um, I'm also going to be needing all these little checks because that's well, that was great for character creation, but now is when we see if you pass or fail. Also, by the way, you uh, by the way you failed also in a Sienna, which means that you are this much closer to leveling up. So that was a persuader, I believe. Failed. I think she's in the. Okay. Well, just so you know. It no. takes only five success. It only takes five failures to level up a uh, to level up the rating of a skill. It takes six successes because you learn more from failure than success. So, make your rolls, folks. If you don't have scout, you're going to need to roll your nature. Um, could could I do something with my dark heather wise? Yes, you both should have dark heather wise. I think um, if you cho- if you took it, well, one of you took dark heather wise. One of you didn't. So yes, you can take dark otherwise and add it to your nature if you don't have access to scout. Okay, now how do we roll our nature again? So your nature is, it's just like every roll in this game, it's d6 is equal to the value. So whatever your nature is, roll that many d6s. And we're just going to uncheck all these. And then I have dark otherwise, so I add that to my nature roll. So I would roll 66. Precisely, yes. All right, cool. And Derek, you would do the same for you. You could do your uh, scout roll 
or your weasel nature, either one. They're both good for sneaking. Okay. I, scout. I have two failures and four successes. Okay. So, Derek, you have two failures. Oh, sorry, you have two successes, one failure, but no traitors. So that's two successes. And at least you have, it looks like, four successes, but one traitor. So that brings you down to three successes. You both no. succeed. You both succeed. You're both good. So that means that you both get a pass in your, at least a scout for you, Takan, and you get a pass in Dark Heatherwise, and I'm filling that in right now for you folks, okay. and oh, also that. in your nature as well. Okay, excellent. So, how do you plan on escaping out of the Dark Heather, since it's not like there's many easy accesses to the surface near you? Except one chamber in particular. If you'd like to know. Um, if I may. So, remember if the way I... I mentioned earlier that the, uh, the Dark Heather has those massive skull chambers? Indeed. Yep. That is the only way immediately out by you, unless you want to walk nearly a mile north from here through the Dark Heather and the many other, uh, Weasels who may encounter you sneaking around with how, clearly packed ready to go. How safe? How safe is it to get out through the skull chamber? Well, for the most part, the weasels tend to stay out of it. Uh, it's the belief of many weasels, especially the more superstitious ones, that the corpses of the dead are best left to rest there while their spirits slowly rise towards their stars and leave the Dark Heather undisturbed. So most weasels aren't keen on hanging out there, especially the superstitious ones with a potential chance that there might still be unquiet spirits yet to rise. So most don't want to hang out there. Plus, even the weasels, like piles of dead bodies, kind of creepy, little weird to hang out there. So at least in terms of being spotted, it's pretty safe. In terms of climbing, a little less safe. It's a pretty steep slope going up the sides, and you have to nearly climb, as you can see from the way that the structure of that dome is that I shared. Uh, you need to climb almost upside down for a brief bit before you can start climbing your way up the interior circle of the little minaret at the very tip that leads to the surface. But if you can get over all that, you're good, and your role would have allowed you to do it if you tried to do it. Um... I think both of these options are equally dangerous. I don't know about you, Derek. <laughs> I could probably climb. Oh, I'm listening. Delilah and Dakana are probably going to argue about what, what to do for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Del Delilah wants to go with the, the safer route out through a different tunnel exit, since she knows the tunnels so well. That's fair. Um, and so Dukan wants to climb, as I heard, correct? Yeah. All right. So this is an interesting thing. Both of you two have different approaches on what you want to do. So this means that you're going to want to uh, roll it out if you don't come to a decision out of character. So this is going to be a persuader between the two of you. Or a deceiver role, you're trying to mislead someone. I don't have a skill in either of those, so... Okay. Alright. So that's the case, then. Uh, you couldn't try Persuader, which means you're being genuine. And Delilah, you can test against your nature now. So the way that your nature works, testing your nature, uh, against or for basically means that you have the ability to uh, make a roll of any kind you'd like, but if you fail, you tax your nature, which means you become less weasel-like operation until you get a nice long rest, basically. So you're going to roll your nature, and you're going to hope you don't get any failures, because any failures you get are taxed against your nature moving forward. Oh, God. Um, wow. Well, good news. Um, 
could be worse. You know, uh, this, will be, this will probably be, make for interesting role play, so I'm down for it. Yeah, no, that's not too bad, actually. Because um, I'm looking at it, and you so far only have two failures, but one of them is a traitor. You rolled four, I believe, right? Four successes, two failures, one traitor. Am I wrong, or is it just not loading for me? Um, that was for the the sneak roll. Oh, okay, hold on. Let me restart my roll to make it. Oh, no, I haven't rolled yet. I was just asking questions. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yes, no means. So, yes, you can roll your nature and fight against it if you'd like. Okay, well, uh, I, I rolled uh, a five. Is a three a failure? It is a failure. However, it's not a traitor, so it doesn't count against you. Okay. So, you have a total of three successes to Derek's one success. Because I believe, yeah, that second one is your roll. So yes, because Derek, you have one success in the five, and then two, uh, two failures, but not any traitors. So you're good on that. Um, so Elise, after much debate, your character makes a salient point. It seems to hit home with uh, with Dukan. It's up to you to choose what that is. So, if you want to roleplay that, by all means. Dikon, you know that no one maintains that chamber. Tiles have got to be loose from roots growing in. One wrong foot and we fall to our death. Fine. <laughs> Fine, he says gruffly. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking sisters. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... That's the case, then. You two start sneaking out. By the way, uh, Jacant, that was a failed roll of Persuade, and that was for you, Delilah, uh, another success on your nature. Ooh. So, um, and you only tax one, I even do it against your nature. You should be good. It's pretty spicy. Um, yeah, so you're only... Your nature is reduced by one, but it can be way worse. So what happens when your nature is reduced? So not anything too extreme. The way that it works, the way nature works, is that you are still effectively a weasel. You're a weasel with human-like qualities, but you're still a weasel. However, the more stress, the more effort and taxing things are put on your plate, much the same with mice, uh, the more you abandon your nature, your instincts, the more likely you are to become more human-like. And your nature is a useful tool. It's kept you alive. So becoming less weasel-like over time can be dangerous. The good news is this isn't a perfect. Um, you will restore your nature soon enough. However, repeatedly acting against your nature can permanently reduce it, at which point a little harder to get back at that. Uh, it's a little harder to remaster those skills, if that makes sense. But you'll over time also increase your nature, so it balances out. So for now, your character feels like a little bit stressed. Not like a lot, but a little bit. And what would be normally their nature comes in a little harder, if that makes sense. Which I guess makes sense, because, you know, we're running away from home and yeah. all that. Yeah, so that's a fair bit of stress. Uh, under duress and under the... Hope that you don't get spotted. So, um, if that's the case then. So you're seeking another and another exit out of the dark heather, and the only other place you can think of is a passage to the surface, many mile or like about a mile north. This is a little dangerous in the sense that by taking this pass, you're basically all but like emerging within earshot of Spruce Tuck. Um, which sort of gives away the fact that there's a uh, a dark heather tunnel under Spruce Tuck, which many mice wouldn't be keen on. So this place is almost always guarded, but they guarded. Oh, that. It's all right. It's not guarded by much. Your decision is a smart one. And you've already made your rolls to escape, which you succeeded. So. Yes. As you sneak down this passageway towards this exit, you can see that the guard, who is normally uh, quite alert, 
is a weasel in full plate and a big furry hat with a spear normally would be sitting upright at attention is bent over and down and slack his noodly body very much tired and drooling and you can see in his other hand is an empty flagon of what had to be beer or some kind of potent alcoholic not some sort of potent alcoholic drink maybe a mead of some kind he's out the door is open you can leave at speed um you managed to creep by him without alerting him. although from the way he occasionally mumbles under his breath you get the feeling he has his own problems that he's currently contending with uh and the the ale in his hand is probably an indicator he's not doing a good job of it. So, the two manage to emerge onto the surface, and in the distance, you can see the large spruce trees which make up Spruce Tuck. You can head that way if you'd like. Yeah, um, I guess we start heading off in that direction. Okay. It's probably about like a 30 minute walk and eventually you get there you can see that uh spruce tuck itself is like many of the places across the mouse territories this beautiful this beautiful town is easily hidden by a single door <laughs> um that externally doesn't look like much if i can this will do um here we go. Making a new handout. Seriously, just this art. Oh, goodness. Just, there we go. Door, door. Stuck. So, a single door. Eh, there we go. Yes, show everyone. Jeez, come on, stop that. A single door leading up from a bunch of stone steps and around the base of it bunch of glowing windows shrouded by stone. There's a number of other trees in the area much like this one. And Spruce Tuck is kind of scattered between a couple of trees. And sitting at the bottom of the stones, sort of head in one head in on one of his hands, absent mindedly tossing a stone in the air, is a particularly gray mouse with well, you know, very distinctive facial feature of hair. Uh, flipping a stone, waiting for you to. Are you trying to hide your approach, particularly? Are we supposed to be in Spruce Talk, or...? Not in it, but you we're probably going to have to walk past it. Whether the mice of Spruce Talk will be happy to see you is another question, but um, best not to announce yourself, at very least. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So the real question is, are you trying to sneak up on Cedric? Really? <laughs> on, if it's Cedric, then no. Yeah, no, it's definitely Cedric. It's Mud and Chops, man. Um, it's a very distinctive thing. There's not many who are like Cedric of Spruce Tuck. At least, at least with hair. You don't see many mice with and chops. That's, that's weird uh, by the standards of mice. Um, though there are some with even more epic and grandiose fur. Um, so, that's the case then. Cedric is just sort of sitting on the steps, sees your approach, tosses the stone over his head, and walks towards you, hands raised, keeping his voice down. Well, ah, uh, they are ready to go then. Yes. Yes, this is it. And he looks up at uh, you, Jukan, and sort of looks at you from like foot to head, and looks at your waist, the skull. Right, let's get going then. We have much work to do. So, what are your names? as slowly he begins to walk along the path on a road that isn't really visible there. Um, but for his little naked tail and cloak behind him, seemingly brushing a couple of uh, needles and 
leaves off what appears to be old, buried, barely cared for stonework. I'm Delilah. This is my brother. To come. Hmm. Delilah and Takan. I have heard both your names, actually. Uh, Delilah, you were the one who... I believe the emissary spoke up. Were you not? I don't know. They spoke of you kindly, which is not a thing they often speak of with weasels. So I have to assume you're the one who didn't attack me. Oh, yes. I believe that was me. Excellent. And we are already on good footing. You, Dukan! I've got to ask, uh, it's quite a trophy you've got. There. Story behind it, I hope? I see how uncomfortable he is. Friend of yours. Ah, <laughs> uh, well... I really can't tell. It's not really much to... And he sort of gestures at the, uh, at his face and then gestures at the bone, the bleached bone on your waist. To really make out... I have to assume you're a soldier by trade, then. I fought your kind before, yes. I fought all kind. Do you make yourself as far north Lockhaven during a gym battle. What do you think? I think it's entirely possible you and I may have crossed swords before, and I didn't know it. But I gesture to the hedgem skull that's like probably making up like one of my pauldrons, and I just yeah. kind of uh, no. If we crossed blades, you wouldn't be standing. <laughs> I suppose that's fair. Oh, I won't lie. I may not carry the trophies. But I have slayed one or two of your kind myself. I have fought in the Weasel Wars. And even went as far back. Well, it's been the preamble before it. Everyone tells me I'm still rather sprightly, though. So I'll take it. 45. I just don't guess it. There will Say, be many he... warriors on this journey. Oh, yes. Very much so. Every one of us, actually. Turns out, the expedition to survive will likely have to fight. But what do you know of our task ahead of us? That we seek to die in a foreign land. Likely warrior's death. <laughs> Cedric kind of nervously laughs. Yes, uh, well, personally, I'd rather like to live, see the end of this expedition, but I suppose that is a takeaway. So, the expedition is going to be traveling for many days. We are going to look for a suitable place to settle. Until then, we will have to traverse outside the scent board. Not that that matters much to weasel kind. The dog heathers existed outside of it for a long time. Mice like us. It's a lot. The territories are relatively peaceful, but out there... Coyotes. Wolves. Bears. The expedition is entirely militarized. It has to be. Every guard accompanying us, even just the trades folk, have been trained at least moderately in the use of a weapon. And the Hedrums are bringing their black powder. And we have you. Mighty Weasels. Jesters to you both. Shovel be fine. At least if the Weasel Lord will be commanding you is to be believed, she'll ever shut up about it. Is she particularly boastful? <laughs> I've dealt with many weasels in my life. 
in some even unpositive terms. She, however, she has very positive terms for herself. She is, however, a worthy fighter and a rather dangerous commander. I did cross swords with her during the Weasel War. We both lived. Through dumb luck, we both lived. I was lucky not to be on her front during the Hedgem. Between the gunpowder and her blades, I wouldn't have made it out then. Many no. mice weren't able to either. Go on, tell us her name. <laughs> so he sighs, shrugs. So her name is Tunnel Lord Body. And I'm going to immediately say uh, both of the two of you. I would say you both know her, actually, um, but for different reasons. Delilah, you've encountered Maudie before. She doesn't work with your uncle. She works for another tunnel lord. But she is, at least with a dark heather, wide berth by many weasels, known as being dangerous and very uh, upwardly mobile for even a weasel of her own kind. To become a captain, she had to slay her last. To become a soldier, she had to slay the soldier who was going to fight and take their stead. And it's been said, she's more than once tried to take a swing at her life. And at she her, nearly at, succeeded. At her what? Her lord, tunnel lord. Um, she nearly it killed her master more than once. And if it weren't for her skill with the blade, master would have probably killed her for it. But so far, she's gotten a pass. So far. <sighs> Christian. <laughs> no, it just lets out a sigh like a oh, fuck. As for you, Dukan, you would definitely recognize her. She was the one who commissioned you during the Battle of the Retros. She was the leader of the Red, one of the major commanders under that overlord. And when her overlord was overwhelmed, you know it was her that kept her lord from falling. And if it weren't for a timely charge on her part, she might have taken her lord's place. What's the She's matter? <sighs> She's power hungry. Even to the point of treachery. She is noble. He does the right thing. No, I would shoot him earlier. If she truly sought to usurp her master, she would have done so by now. I was there. I saw with my own eyes. Delilah would make this face, like, kind of her little snoot twisting up, like, we can disagree to disagree. <laughs> You can see that Cedric is watching your reactions. Kind of nods. She's uh, an interesting character. We're lucky to have her skill at arms. The good news, she's willing to fight for us because it appears she's finally burned her bridges. Turns out that when you take a swipe of your lord, you do it again and a couple more times. Eventually, there's no value you could possibly hold that'll make you worth keeping around. As I understand it, she fled from her overlord for fear of death. She has a vested interest in the survival of the caravan. So if she ever sets foot in the mouse territories again, 
I likely suspect she'll be one less problem in the lock haven to deal with at the hands of your own people. <sighs> this is really the sort of person that we want to have on this expedition. Well, uh, if I may be so bold, I may not know much of your weasel custom. Or at least, not as much as I would like in a kinder time. But, probably not know. She's actually quite a tyrannical maniac, and I'm not a particularly big fan. But she knows how to fight. She has stake and skin in this journey. So, I can trust her motives. Only because her motives are survival and self-service. And at least those don't lie. Though you two seem to certainly seem a little bit kinder than her. Or pauses and looks back at you, Jacon. More reliable, anyhow. I suspect Gwendolyn might want to speak to you at some point before you leave. So... You guys walk for another couple of hours uninterrupted. I think this is a good moment to swap back over to Natalie. Natalie. Yes. So, the rest of the day went by smooth. Turns out that, uh, well, Arden's father is a man of his word. Arden signed the papers, and, well, everything went great. Now, Odin and Karen are joint owners of the old bread shop. They even managed to hire a few clerks to begin manning it, cleaning it up, and by the time that you set out in the morning, the place is already glowing with light as it's part of nights as usual. It almost feels like your mom and your dad could be in. So, it's in good hands. <laughs> Now comes the less pleasant part of the deal. Unfortunately. <laughs> so, by the time you get to the farm, you can see that Odin is sitting on the front porch, crumbling a little bit under his breath, nursing what appears to be a small wooden cup filled with what's well, probably some sort of juice or maybe even some kind of cold-pressed coffee of some kind. Um, some kind of cold, caffeinated drink. And as he sips there and sees you approaching, he raises his mug. Hail to the conquering hero! It's nice to see you. Good to um, see you as well. Fortunately, well, my son appears to have taken himself off to the tavern. So, I'm afraid you're going to have to catch up with him there. Might Don't know why I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm not. It's for the best that he got out of here. He's going to be in great trouble if he keeps this up. No doubt. Well then, I thank you again for taking over my family shop. I... Wish you luck with it, and hope it brings you good fortune. Thank you. I apologize in advance if I kill your son on the journey. Please don't. I'm sure I've had plenty of chances to nearly get himself killed without your help. <laughs> Be safe. Thank you. So there's only two taverns in town. And they're both pretty short distance a walk. After all, Ivydale is a hamlet, really, more than anything. And by the time you get there, you can see one particular mouse sort of hanging out there, chilling at the bar. And so far, it seems he hasn't been able to get a single thing to drink, as he is irritatedly tapping his little talons on the countertop, waiting to be fed. Um, slowly, the door opens, and he turns, and he looks, 
And he groans. Oh. Babysitter. Hmm. Yes. Babysitting a grown man. Quite the entertaining job. Yes, I suppose it would be for you, wouldn't it? And he slowly sits himself up, and you can see he's got himself on a little cloak and a couple of van braces made out of leather um, and a mace in his hand. And Dufferin, like the rest of his siblings, all have he has blonde hair as well, blonde fur, but he's a little slightly less... Uh, slightly less physically refined as his family is. You can tell from his line that they all work a hard. Talfrin, however, has spent his entire life ducking responsibility. And as a result, his waistline is a tad wider than his family's. Um, however, he is still quite physically fit. As the phrase goes, He it, it's, uh, it's not fat, it's power. Um... If only because this also makes him somewhat a little bit more physically intimidating even to the other mice in the town. Slowly rises up and looks at you. Well, can I at least get a drink to go? Something I think like. I, want, I don't know which would be worse to deal with you, just sober or drunk. I'm not walking wasted, thank you very much. I just want a small ale and the woman behind the counter is sitting over like on the other side of the counter you can see this whole time she's been watching Toffrin instead of serving him polishing a cup with a rag are you gonna pay your deed back to me then I'm not paying you my deed my family's not mine to give you owe me so much coin why should I pull you even one more thing? Because I'm going to be escorting people out of the territories, serving the common good. Yes, the common good of your own coffers. Keep your family out of trouble and you out of trouble. Doing me a favor by leaving. You know what? On that, that's worth a drink. And she takes the cup, puts it on the table, and then you just see her take a bottle, pop a top off of it, a little cork, and then just sort of empty it down put it on the counter and slide it towards him. It's on the house, as long as you never come back. You miserable cur. Then he catches it. And to that fine woman, I will gladly agree. And he just downs it in one sip and puts it on the counter and then pushes it back to her. And she catches it. Safe journeys. Then turns to Sienna. Don't lose him. Much as I might not care, I'm sure his father might. Mm, yes, unfortunately, I've been tasked with the exact job of making sure he doesn't get hurt or into trouble. Toffrin rolls his eyes. Please, I've trained enough to defend my... You're doing this as a courtesy to my father so that he doesn't feel stressed when I leave. Mm -hmm. However, you need to phrase it in order to make yourself feel better. It doesn't matter to me. Fine. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Take me away. And he holds his hands up like they're in irons. Drag <laughs> me off. Lack the of away like, you gross. Don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> so let us be on our way. The sooner we leave, the sooner I can be rid of you. Fine. And uh, he goes to the door and holds it open with a grandiose gesture. After you, Queen of Ivy Day. That's more like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say anything. I just walk by, kind of rolling my eyes, like, so extra. <laughs> <laughs> he closes the door behind you, and you two begin your hike. Um... The next few days, go quietly. There's not too much that goes foul. A little bit of poor weather on the road for you, Delilah, and Jakan. 
the rather unseasonal gust of rain comes through. Pretty strong, but nothing you need to really worry too much about. You're both hardy people, and Cedric can clearly manage himself in the harsh conditions of the wild. You sort of just hunker down under a tree and let it blow over. Though it was a little odd that it came up. As for you, Sienna, journey was mercifully more quiet than the leaving. Toffrin, despite his significant disdain of you, spends a lot of time as you're walking away from Ivydale looking back. And swear there's like it's a complex look on his face. Like he regrets having to leave, but he he is leaving. He knows it's the right thing to do. Despicable little shit he always has been. He does love his family. He doesn't want to bring any harm on them, especially from his mistakes. So the journey calls. Eventually, both of you both of these parties arrive at Lock Haven, roughly around the same time. And Lock Haven itself is still, to those who have never seen it, impressive beyond measure. Most places in the Mouse Territories are made of wood, or carved into natural formations, as they must be. After all, mice are not mighty, they're not humans. Felling trees is a task that takes entire towns, days at a time to do. Even the hands of weasels have limits. But here, Lockhaven, the mice of the territories show truly their greatest capacity for ingenuity and strength. Lockhaven is the seat of the guard and a true keep within the territories. It sprawls upward, so large even the gates are large enough to have many weasels walk through at a time. Made out of laid stone and mortar, carved into the side of a rock with chisel and patience and grit, and overgrown with leaves and flowing with banners, Lockhaven towers over the surroundings. It is, and always will be, a beautiful sight to any mouse. And even to the weasels that have besieged it more than once, there is an almost bitter moat of respect there. A structure that you could not fell. In all the weasel wars, the weasels never got close to Lockheed. And even with the aid of the Hedgems, you still couldn't breach these gates. Now in front of it, you can see many other little things about. This is where we get to show you guys the large creatures that seem to not dwarf Lockhaven, but stand so large that even against Lockhaven, they're quite noticeable. That would be the caravan. These massive creatures, which I will do right there. Let's go. Tortoises. Yeah, turtle. Mm -hmm. Tortoises, the like of which you have never seen before. Most people go their entire lives without seeing creatures this large within the territories. Least of all, this many in one place. There are about 20 tortoises, each bearing huge structures of wood and stone and earth on their back. Some are built clearly to house mice. Others are built like gardens, or in some cases, foundries or smiths. Another one is clearly some sort of pack turtle loaded down with goods, as well as also enough living space for about seven to 10 mice to be on. A few slightly larger structures for the, for the uh, hedgehogs. And then one tortoise in particular slightly paler purple with what literally looks like a small mountainside made out of mud recreated on its back with a clear architecture of weasels playing at hand a tiny dark heather 
barely big enough for six weasels, maybe. Or seven. And surrounding it, a wooden structure, almost like a gantry way about it. All illuminated from the top by bright beacons of flame. A slightly more pinkish lithium red flame coming from the back of the weasel Warren caravan. Um, and around them, more mice than you've ever seen and more weasels than you could ever imagine. There are many about. This is probably more mice than you've seen, for the most part, in your entire town. Uh, I would be willing to say, Sienna. And you can see there are many other people arriving at the same time, slowly migrating here. And it's about, I'm willing to say, a little bit after dawn. It's still cold in the air uh, after your um, but You can see a number of groups, hedgehogs, mice, and weasels moving forward. And one particular uh, group catches your eye. And that would be what appears to be a group of heavily armored mice escorting one particular mouse, um, wearing rather beautiful blue robes resplendent with feathers. And even the weasels and hedgehogs seem to give her a significant degree of respect. That would be Gwendolyn of the Guard. That is a name that even the two weasels would recognize. Gwendolyn, the winner of the Weasel War. Gwendolyn, the survivor of the Coup of Midnight. Gwendolyn, she who negotiated the treaty with the Hedgehogs. And in her hands is not a scepter of no crown upon her head, but instead a great halberd of silver polished to an absolutely blinding sheen. And wherever she goes, you can see that the guard, the mice, even the weasels willingly sort of cede the ground to her. She barely spends more than a couple seconds with anyone before she moves on. And she notices your two groups that seem to be moving sort of parallel. Um, speaking of, so, Sienna, you see two weasels being escorted by a mouse with gray fur and a sky blue cloak walking into the territory. One weasel clad in the raiment of a snake, the skin of a snake like a cloak, with a great blade in his hands and what appears to be skulls around his waist. And the other weasel with a green cloak and clad in somewhat more esoteric gear. Somewhat less threatening, but still a weasel nonetheless. How do you react to this sight? Imagine this is probably the first time I've seen a weasel in person. So, Diana is probably a little intimidated, though trying not to show it. Um, she's not too scared because obviously they haven't attacked anyone yet but she's going to remain on guard because she really doesn't know what to expect from weasels. That's entirely fair. Um, as for the other two, uh, you'll see a pair of mice emerging from a similar parallel path to you. Uh, one of whom clad in rather pretty clothing, uh, more clothing than you see most mice wear wielding a large, what appears to be some sort of spear and a shield in the other hand. Um, and behind her, a mouse somewhat less delightfully arrayed, wielding a mace and glowering at you with absolutely reckless hate behind his eyes. As you slowly approach each other, do you do anything? My best to look. <laughs> <laughs> not bothered. Not bothered by you. Oh, I wouldn't do anything. Just, you know, 
like I said, remain aloof. Alert. All right. That's fair. So, slowly, as the path sort of converges and brings you to within short distance of each other, um, you see that Gwendolyn approaches the, t- the two groups of you that have arrived, and her honor guard of Armice stop and plant their spears behind her as she steps forward. You there. I wish your names. Both the weasels and the mice. Cedric, the head of the weasels, falls to one knee and holds his hand over his chest. Cedric, or Spruce Tuck, at your service, my lady. And she looks to the rest of you in turn. Uh, first to the mice, then to the weasels. Um, I am Sienna of Ivy Dale, the lady. Uh, behind you, you can hear sort of stumbling over his words. Uh, and I, my lady, am, uh, oof, sorry, a little out of breath, sorry. Um, and he sort of like gathers himself and slowly goes to a knee. I'm Tofrin, Ivydale, my lady. You're not one of the guard. Uh, no, um, conscripted, ma'am. Just so. And you two. She points her halberd at the two at the two weasels in turn, uh, Delilah and then Dukan. Names, titles, anything I should know. I am Delilah of Duskhaven and Pathfinder. Dukan. Hmm. You are familiar. And she points her halberd at you, Dukan. Not like threateningly, but instructively, like she's. It's a proxy for her hand. I've seen you before. The Regim War. The battle. You were there, weren't you? I. She narrows her eyes. And you survived it. Good. We could use survivors on this. So, what talents do you bring the guard? Both of you. Then she looks down at the mice. And all of you. I wish to know who I will be journeying with. Cedric slowly rises up from his knee. Journeying with? Mate. Ma'am, you're leaving with us. Quinlan mm-hmm. nods. I have a successor. Fallon will keep the safe. They'll keep the territory safe in my stead. But this expedition, this requires a little more experience. I will not see a new territory established only to fall. I, I lead you. You will answer to me. Cedric of Spruce Tuck. As you, Sienna of Ivy Dale. And Tophram, conscript that you are, your allegiance is to the guard. So that cloak of yours is going to mean something more than just going to keep yourself warm. I expect you to conform to our values, to serve as nobly as any other guard. If you fail, you will walk home. Then Tophram lowers his head and nods. I just so. So, skill sets then. You, the big one with the halberd. What do you bring? Or is it merely might? I bring death to your Very well. Don't pretend we didn't take your people with us for muscle. Or any other skill sets you have are welcome. Hmm. 
Lottie will be of, uh, very interested to have you aboard her crew. And what of you, Delilah? My lady, I am a pathfinder and a cartographer. I ah. will be finding the way for us. And you and Cedric will be friends then, or at the very least, you'll be compatriots in that task. If I'm not mistaken, Cedric, you are a cartographer yourself? Yes, sir. It's hardly my first vocation, lady. Nonsense. I've seen your work. You will work with her. The two of you will help path the way. What of you, Sienna? What bring you here to us? I'm seeking adventure. Yeah. As far as my skills go, I've become quite handy with my weapon. Additionally, I've always had a gift with the knowledge of the weather. Um, she looks up at the sky, kind of takes it all in. Uh, for example, it's going to rain in about half an hour, so we may want to keep that in mind. <laughs> Make me a... let's see... Make me a weather watcher roll. Okay. And I want you to make me a flash flood wise roll with it. So add that together, plus okay. your, uh, and roll that total pile. Let me see what you get. So I need to pull up my character sheet. No worries. Mm -hmm. That should be assigned to you. Yes, it is. Okay, good. Okay. Five in Weather Watcher and a two in um, Flash Flash Mode. Uh, flash flood wise. I see. And you rolled hella good too. <laughs> That's a success in both of those, a pass in both. Well done. So, as you look to the sky as you say it, initially, you kind of say it like off the cuff, as like a we should get going kind of thing. Then you look upwards and you can sort of see as you hold your hand up, you do a little trick that you learned in the guard. Like you sort of hold your hands up in a certain way and look through them. You can obscure the glare of the sun on your eyes, but it'll still come through the clouds. So it'll let you sort of see through the clouds a little more readily, see how dense they are. Combine that with the gusts of wind you're feeling, the slightly bitter edge, which should be gone. By yes, there's a great deal of rain coming. It might not happen immediately. Beyond the rain that's initially going to be here in the next couple of minutes, bigger storms are on the horizon. And, yeah, I had to roll flash unwise for a reason. They might bring enough rain to make low areas fly. Ooh. I quickly relay this information to the party. Cedric sort of nods. Yes, well then, we have uh, much to do before we go then. We should get to it. And uh, next to you, um, you can see uh, Toffrin stands up. I, I also bring um, grain gathering and bread making, as well as my arm, lady. And she uh, turns and nods. Good. We have much need for that. You have many to feed, guard mouse. Well, that's the case then. Cedric, take them to Raphael. Get them properly sorted. We have much to do if we have to leave within a half an hour, you said? Um, perhaps even sooner. The wind appears to be picking up quite a bit. Delightful. Well then, if that's the case, we should get to it. And, uh... With that, she turns on their heel and begins to walk away. Um, 
barely um, <laughs> barely a pause in her step. And she immediately goes to another group as they approach. And you can see she does the exact same thing to them. Goes through one by one, asks names, what their vocations are. You can see another pair of weasels approaching. Um, about the only weasels you see in the area here, except for of what seem like lower tier uh, peasants. Some of whom appear to be putting the final touches on the tortoise with what must be the warrens that you'll be spending your time in. Um, other than that, though, you don't see any other warrior weasels. You know it was going to be only a few slots, but you didn't realize it was literally just going to be like you and only a couple others. Um, so, it's a pretty big area. Is there anything you guys want to uh, explore before you go over to Raphael? Um... Well, since we are kind of on a time limit, it might be best to just do that and then explore later. Yeah. Okay. So, off to the side of Lockhaven, underneath the shade of what would have been a bush filled with beautiful leaves, uh, but appears to be long dead, choked by the stone, you can see one particular tortoise, uh, a little different than the rest. By a little different, I mean very different. For one, the tortoise is bigger than most of the other ones, and the other ones are still big, even by the standards of you, uh, as even as weasels. You're pretty much eye level with these tortoises. Uh, they are huge. Um, this one, however, is even bigger than that, and on its back is a three stories wooden structure, belching smoke, and you can see occasionally gouts of flame from its both wooden and, in some places, metallic structure. The sounds of hammers come from within, and you can see a number of hedgehogs, large, twice the size of your standard mouse, sort of wandering about, all wielding halberds and pole arms with a strange tube at the end of them, some slightly smoldering at the end. The tube appears to be rifled going on. These are definitely hedgehogs. Um, as far as most of you are concerned, most of you probably, at least as far as the weasels go, uh, Delilah, have you ever seen or had any reason to venture far enough to see hedgehogs? Or have you only heard of them through your brother? Um, I feel like Delilah might have seen a hedgehog from a distance, but has never really, like, interacted with them, per se. Okay. It's pretty fair. Um, knowing this, uh, yeah, most of the hedgehogs there, you can see, are clad in what appears to be some kind of heavy iron armor, but its surface is pockmarked and coated with a red paint. It's largely faded and chipped off with time and damage. Um, one particular hedgehog seems to have heavy armor the most, relatively white quills that only go brown at the very tips, and has an armored shoulder plate going over one of the straps on one arm in bright red with a gold button connecting them together. Rather distinctive compared to the rest. Now you can see he's coated in soot and barking orders to nearby hedgehogs. If that's not Raphael, you would have to eat your head. So, Raphael uh, slowly notices your approach, plants his axe and leans on it. So new recruits then. You two must be one of our six, as he gestures to Delilah and to Khan. Well, we don't have many weasel-sized pieces of equipment thus far. The guard are really poorly equipped to outfit you. Glad to see you brought your own. But if you need, I can whip something up. It'll be my first time doing business with weasels. Guard mice, we nod his head. 
A pleasure. Uh, likewise. So, Gwendolyn sent me you all, I'm assuming, to get your sorted. We need to get you assigned to tortoises. Well, and he looks back up at the two of you, uh, Jakan and Delilah. Most of you need to be assigned tortoises. I you two can go. <laughs> yeah. You can figure out which one's yours. I mean, we might need more weasels. But we can at least introduce you to it. This way. And he begins to sort of clamber towards uh, two of the tortoises. These are the tortoises I sent you the pictures of specifically. So the first one is slightly off green. Um, and sort of like that grayish green you get on some land tortoises. A little on the older side, but not overly so. Relatively standard looking structure on its back. Um, and it's crawling with mice. There's like five, six other mice on there at the moment. Just all doing their own things, battening down the hatches. Literally, like, everything that isn't nailed to the ground, they are ripping up and tying in place. There's dozens of barrels and, satch and like, satchels, bags of what appear to be grain, and even boxes, some of which shake, like, the sound of arrows within them. Uh, and other ones sort of pulling at the rigging, almost like they're getting a ship ready to sail. And uh, Raphael slowly stands in front of this giant tortoise, cranes its head slowly towards Raphael and cranes its head slowly towards you and you can see its bright orange eyes as it sort of looks slowly and then turns back and just opens its mouth and speaks in a deep resonant tone in a language you can't understand it sounds like the creaking of trees this loud this loud and Raphael slowly nods turns around this son's name is Garrow, and he'll be escorting the two of you to the new territories. Gestures towards uh, both you, Sienna, and Cedric. Cedric kind of points at himself. Oh, all right. Uh, nice to meet you, Garrow. I don't speak turtle. Raphael leans <laughs> down. He speaks, or at least understands, mouse. So just don't say anything that'll get him to kick you off. <laughs> well, pleasure to meet you, Garrow. Slowly inclines its head. And then turns back towards uh, Raphael and speaks in a line of uh, deep, creaking speech. A little more staccato this time. As Raphael slowly turns towards the uh, weasels and then back to him. Now don't worry, it's one of ours, or they'll part of us. Claiming ownership's not particularly f the thing I'm fond of. But uh, they won't be riding on you. That's actually the job of a different one. And uh, slowly, he uh, gestures towards one a little further behind Garrow, with the obvious Warren on its back. Um, and on top of this tortoise is one particularly long noodly weasel. Um, JJ, thank you for the gift sub. Much hey. love, JJ. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, JJ. Um, let me just get that image out here. I can't believe I don't have this picture on. Um, and you can see she's barking orders in what appears to be the sharp and harsh language of weasels. So that is most assuredly your captain, Mwadi. Oh, can you put her name in the chat so I don't forget it? Because I will certainly forget it. Sure, no problem. I meant to ask earlier. No problem. No problem at all. Mwadi Red is her name. There you go. Um, so I'm going to get a picture of you folks to reference. as we zoom out with this. Again, I literally have my art here working on and getting this all going, so thank you all for your patience in this. Let's see, as we export out, and a size that won't make Roll20 explode. Please, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
All right. And here she is. Bloody bread. Come on. There you go. Roll 20's being nice today, folks. Praise mold. Praise roll 20. <laughs> there we go. Bloody the red. So. Her fur is actually a relatively pale white, with only a couple splotches of red coloration across her body. Many weasels, as they get old, stones change color, or at least their color will fade. But you get the feeling she was never particularly red to begin with. Uh, but you can see her body is coated in red paint, in intricate symbols, geometric and in some cases, in the languages of the Dark Heather. Largely warnings not to approach, and in some cases, even what appear to be wards against foul spirits. Strange things, even the most, uh, I guess we would say, superstitious of weasels wouldn't go that far. But clearly this is a woman who feels she's so cloaked in death, such protections are warranted. Um, she's sort of barking orders at a few of the weasel serfs about her who are getting things ready. And uh, Raphael rolls his eyes. If you'd like, I can introduce you, unless you want to do that yourself. See, it looks over towards the, uh, towards really all of you. Delilah looks, Delilah looks tense, like she doesn't want to meet her at all. <laughs> <laughs> we are... Who are you? And he looks at your belt and sees the hedgehog skull. I... I suppose you would be, wouldn't you? All right. Well then, you're gonna want to meet your new boss soon enough. In the meantime, I have weapons to sharpen and a cannon to load. As he looks over his shoulder, and you can see the large three-story wooden structure that you saw that you walked away from. The tortoise there is slowly bracing its legs as a wooden crane being wheeled over by dozens of mice and a pair of hedgehogs pushing it from behind are bringing over what must be the largest metal pipe you've seen. Uh, the thing is like the length of pretty much the whole tortoise. Like, it's almost as big as, as long as the tortoise is. And it's assembled onto this complicated wooden and metal structure that as it cranes over, slowly lowers down with a loud clank and a crunch as the wood beneath compacts under its weight, and the forge fire slowly billows its smoke out around it. Oi, fire lances. You gotta love them. Damn if they're not the most frustrating things to rig up onto a stationary structure, let alone something that walks Oi, if you need me, I'll be over there. I'll see you all on the road otherwise. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. And he looks at, uh, he looks back over at even you, uh, Tikhan. Good hunting. So he, uh, walks away, unless anyone approaches him. <laughs> uh, so scared of the cannon. <laughs> Staring at the cannon. I'm scared of the cannon. Oh, you're scared of the cannon. Yeah, I've never seen anything like. That. We're gonna put you in it. Oh, <laughs> no weasel cannon. Flying <laughs> weasel cannon. Oh. <laughs> it's it's like a snake. It's like one of those uh, party popper snake things. Like the it's the peanut tube. It has the snake in it, but it's a weasel being shot at Mach three. Um, oh. <laughs> um, so you can see as the hedgehogs are all loading and cranking that up that there appears to be a single lone mouse clad in gray a gray cloak with a rather fine hat on um, 
A strange hat, actually, never seen one quite like this. Tricorn. Not common, this side of the territories. Uh, black, with a red feather in it. And on his back, you can see a hook, and what appears to be a similar weapon, like the kind the hedgehogs have, but scaled down for a mouse. Which is weird, because the hedgehogs don't sell those weapons to anybody. So that must have been a gift. And you can see he's currently chatting with Maudie, irritated. Uh, can't KJ. quite make out what he's saying, KJ. but like... JJ, you absolute mad lad. Oh, cannoli! Ten gift KJ. subs, dude, are you serious? Oh my god, JJ. Thank Damn. you so much, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you, dude. You're fucking insane. Holy shit. 69. <laughs> Holy cannoli. 69 total gift subs to the channel. JJ, the absolute legend. Thank you so, so much, dude. Nice. So awesome. <laughs> Love you, JJ. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, for the moment, I don't have good art of this character yet. But that's because of the fact that this character is not mine. Um, this is a character from my last Mouse Guard campaign, so you will see more in the future. So for now, we have stand-in art, which we'll be using. Pardon the moment while I make sure I do this character justice. Um, I don't want to shortchange it. So for now, this rather underwhelming depiction will have to do. As it slowly loads in, my patience slowly wings. There we go, okay. So, gray mouse, roughly that color, a little less beat up, and no peg leg. But his little the right... peg leg is so cute. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, he's great. I love him. Uh, a character you will meet in the books if you read them. Read their books. Read their books. Um, so, let's go over there, or do you kind of give them a reason to do? Okay, so I had to scratch it by the gift subbing. What are, what are we? What's this little mouse? <laughs> yeah, I was a little. I got, I'm still a bit distracted. I'm trying to focus back on what is going on here. You're good. Okay, so um, as you all watch the uh, weasels kind of go, all the hedgehogs go about manning and getting this cannon prepped for deployment, you can see that meanwhile, while all this is happening, Wadi is now currently barking irritably at one particular mouse. This gray mouse in a rather fine hat, a black cloak, and a red feather in his tricorn black hat. On his back is a hook, and what appears to be some kind of a hedgehog fire pike adapted to the scale of a mouse, but cut down and easier to wield. Something, again, as I mentioned, kind of weird, they don't give those out readily. So whoever this is, kind of probably has the favor of the hedgehogs. He's a tiny badass. Pretty much. Um, they're currently barking at each other quite irritably. Uh, you can't quite make out what it is at this distance, but they are. They're having at it. So it's up to you folks uh, what you do. You can start getting yourselves loaded onto the tortoises or you can talk uh, and see what's up. Or, and even if you do want to get yourself loaded on the tortoises, unfortunately, the weasels will probably have to eventually go over to Maudie, since uh, she is technically the one who's going to be in charge of you this expedition. Uh, Delilah's going to rip the band-aid off. <laughs> um, especially since she seems to be harassing this poor mouse, and they're just going to head over with a huff. What yeah. seems to be the problem? She, she, do she does it in such a way where she's like cutting Maudie off from the mouse, but also, like, is looking at the mouse. So it, it, it seems to Maudie, like, the mouse, she's calling the mouse the problem, since she's apparently being an asshole. But she's looking at the mouse like, I'm sorry, she's an asshole. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> it does. Totally does. Um, 
And uh, Dukon, are you coming over as well? Yeah, definitely. Or... Okay. So I'm as off you to the side. Okay. Um. So as you uh, as you slowly like as you approach and you talk, um, you can see the mouse slowly looks up to you. And you can see on the right side of his face, he's got an eye patch. Uh, he doesn't seem to have any major injuries on that side of his face, but he's wearing an eye patch nonetheless. Um, and he slowly looks up and nods. Ah, it's nothing. Me and her just have some words to handle, don't we? And uh, the uh, Marty leans down. It sort of steps from the top of the... Uh, the micro dark heather on the, the warren on the back of the tortoise and slowly like slinking down as she goes and you can see at her side is this massive long sword comically ridiculously long um i would say elden ring sized overly big weapon is about the same golf like ballpark this thing is almost as long as she is um and you can actually see from the way that the scabbard is made, it's designed to snap open laterally when she takes the blade out. Because taking it out the long way would just be impractical. Um, as she slowly slinks down, eyes narrowing to a point, as she fixes the mouse with a glare. I was saying that if you're going to be in this expedition, you're not going to be behind the wall. And to which uh, the mouse smirks up at her and says, And I was saying that I'm not taking orders from anyone but Gwendolyn. My orders are simple. I keep watch on you as well as the entire expedition. And he looks up to uh, you, Delilah. No offense. You'll forgive us for taking precautions, after all. Where am I managed? Takes off his tricorn and smiles. And you can see he's got, like, a surprisingly, genuinely pleasant smile. Like, two little adorable mouse teeth at the front. And a pair of whiskers that he seems to have, like, almost curled up at the end. Um, his cloak, as you can see, actually has a red underlayer on it, like velvet. And he has a set of bandoliers around his waist. which seem to have a bunch of satchels on them. Big enough to hold, like, BB-sized bits of metal, probably for the weapon on his back. I'm Preston. Preston. Ah, a port sumac. A pleasure. I'm sure. And you are. He holds out a hand. He, she kneels down to shake it. Delilah, this is my brother to come. He takes your hand and leans in and then kisses it lightly in like an overly flourished gesture. A pleasure, I'm sure. Lovely to meet you. Glad to see that Maudie's not the only one I got to deal with here. And uh, Maudie glowers and leans down and literally barks at him. And he sort of like staggers back a little bit. His hand goes towards his waist and slowly goes back up. You know it's part of the deal, Maudie. You keep within line of my ship. I keep the caravan safe. We all get there in one piece. Simple as that. Just try not to make any unfortunate moves on the Invicta. Me crew aren't particularly keen on it. He slowly turns towards the two of you. If you wish to meet me, in slightly more comfortable conditions. You're more than welcome to. I have good need of strong hands and firm backs, such as yourselves. Good day to you. And he just sort of uh, clops off towards the far side where you can see there's this large thing under, it seems to be a massive tarp and a bunch of mice running around, similarly dressed to him. Uh, it's as big as one of the tortoises, but it's, it's definitely not a tortoise. Just can't really make out much about it from here, really. Um, his body like steps down, hissing in frustration at the mouse as he walks away. 
It all right. You two. You must be under my charge. Indeed. Names. Titles. Delilah of Deathcaven, Pathfinder. You call. We've met. I we have. We have. You fought in the Regim battle, didn't you? I You are good with a sword and an axe. And any killing from it. Which is good. Because we need you for that. She turns over to you, Delilah. I have little need for pathfinding, but Gwendolyn might. So if she can use ye, by all means, feel free to help. Make yourself useful. I intend to. Go ahead. Say that again. I intend to. Good. There's exactly six cots in this. She gestures to the war behind her. Um, and you can see there's really only like five entrances on this thing. It's, it's not particularly big. It's pretty small, actually. Um, the tunnels themselves are basically big enough for you to get on all fours and sneak in. Which, as weasels, is kind of what you do. It doesn't mean you're psyched about it. Um, compared to the Dark Heather, this is a very poor substitute. But at least you're not going on the bottommost layer. It seems to be even tighter. You'll be commanding two of my other men. And I'll be commanding you. Your uncle told me you're capable. I hope he wasn't lying. He was not. Good. And come with me. We have much to discuss. And she snakes into the topmost part of the turtle. Uh, and you can see that the the tiles that are inlaid into the mud, the hardened uh, terracotta-like structure, uh, are actually inlaid with what appear to be amethyst or purple glass going into the topmost one. And even though it's clearly her worn, she gestures for you to follow her. So, at that moment, we're going to cut back over to Net. Um, so, where are you and what are you up to? I guess I've probably gone over to the mouse tortoise to figure out where I'm going to be spending my nights or part of my days. Okay. So, uh, as you uh, sort of go over towards Garo, Garo slowly inclines his head and lowers himself a little further toward the bottom. And you can see from the actual structure, there's a step-up section that's designed to sort of let you rise your way upwards along the side. Right between these two heavy stones, it's going to keep it locked in place. Uh, one of the mice that's on there rolls down on the rope ladder to let you on board, and Cedric climbs up with you um, onto the top. And Cedric sort of looks around and sort of uh, casts his gaze about. So, uh, if you don't mind me asking, who's going to be in charge of this one? And one of the mice goes, uh, well, we were promised to have a patrol leader. None of you are patrol leaders. No, I'm afraid not. Still waiting on that one. So the Grafer, is it you? Oh, yes, I... I suppose it is. It's me, I guess. Well, find a place to stow your gear. Guess me and Garrow and you, as he turns towards uh, you, Sienna are going to have to become friends this trip. 
tell me, how long have you been with the guard? As he moves inside and takes what appears to be a rucksack from his, uh, under his cloak and starts, like, stuffing it into a corner. And that, like, main long, like, uh, long chamber area, the one that has the big entrance door there, inside there's a large, what looks like, folding table and a bunch of places from where you can see hammocks would get hooked up. He just kind of puts his stuff in one corner. Uh, it has been four years since I joined. Four years? Hmm. Well, that's uh, it's quite an interesting time to have joined. As I recall, that's uh, right on the edge of the hedgerum, wasn't it? You see anything then? Fortunately, not. It was during the beginning of my training. Oh. Consider yourself lucky. There wasn't much good there, I'm afraid, actually. Uh, could have gone a lifetime without seeing those things. Besides, lots of hokum about what happened in that battle. Tell of legends, monsters, shrike. It's mostly just tales. So I hear. So, adventure. What draws you here, is it? Indeed. Hmm. Mouse territory is not dangerous enough for me. <laughs> uh, it's not so much the danger that I long for. Uh, you see, these weapons that I acquire were originally my great-great-grandfather's, which he acquired during his uh, time. Hmm. I hope to do something similar during my time, instead of milling about, living an ordinary life. Well, you joined the right caravan. We're going out beyond the scent border, so there will be much fighting. At least, if we're unlucky, and it's a caravan, so we'll be unlucky. Unfortunately. Do you want me to help you put that away? As he sort of gestures towards your stuff. I would like to see where I will be spending my time. You'll be sharing this cot then. And he gestures towards uh not the cot he's putting putting his stuff under, but another one. Uh there's a second hammock or a set of hammock hooks there, and you can see there's already two other sets of gear underneath it. What I understand from Gwendolyn, the uh, the sleep schedule is rotated at night. So two shifts keep watch, one shift sleeps, seven hammocks, 20 mice. So the, at least the ones in dawn would be the smallest shift. So when someone else isn't sleeping in that, you'll be sleeping in it. We'll be eating all our meals here. Or with Lady Gwendolyn if she needs us. And other than that, tortoises don't stop, unfortunately. But there's enough time to run ahead of them and do any business that might need doing and still catch up. No room for toilets in these things, I'm afraid. I don't think Gara would appreciate that. Hmm. I see. Should make for an interesting journey. Very much so. I take it in this universe, my subbladders. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm just gonna say I know mice don't actually like. They don't have the ability to hold it in real life. <laughs> this is fantasy mice that wield swords. <laughs> We're gonna assume they have the ability to both hold liquor in the literal sense and in the practical sense. They've evolved beyond. <laughs> Their primitive forms. Their big brains gave them big bladders. <laughs> That's very fair. <laughs> um, so, Cedric leans against the timbers. So, uh, did you have any questions for me then? Mm -hmm. Gonna be rooming together the other crew for a while. So, if you have anything to ask, rather an open book. Something tells me that Gwendolyn addressed us all as a group. I might have to be dealing with our weasel friends again soon. Indeed. Uh, 
Remind me again how long this journey is supposed to take. <laughs> I bet Cedric kind of barks out a hollow laugh and then leans mm -hmm. down. So, uh, we don't know how long we're going, actually. The problem is, is that we, we are the scouts. We are the settlers and everything. Mice don't leave the territories often, you see. And while the Withrashers have gone in advance and done scouting, they can only go so far. So that falls on to us. So we'll be searching for a home till we find one. Hmm. Could take weeks, months, years. Yeah, possibly. Can't imagine it'll go more than a couple of years, though. There's only enough rations on one of these tortoises to last us for a year before we have to start harvesting our own. Even the greenhouse tortoise won't be able to keep us full of food forever. Unfortunately. So, work with what we got. <laughs> Thank you guys for the first love. The art on this. Um, it looks so good, dude. <laughs> All the art looks so good. But you did. Thank you, man. So, more to come, I promise. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead. Oh, no, you're good. Um, what do you make of our weasel companions? I have mixed history with weasels, as anyone in the guard would. Weasels, unfortunately, sit at a different place in nature. It's a phrase I heard Kenzie mention more than once. The older guard might not have met him. I don't know. He. Hmm. Well, we'll see in time. He always used to tell me that uh, weasels aren't truly cruel or savage. We are to weasels what wheat is to us, and there is no wheat seed that loves a mouse or its plate in the same way a mouse never loves a weasel and its plate. So I am aware of the need for them, and I'm willing to see them as individuals prove themselves, or at least not disappoint, but they are a danger. Those two seemed nice enough. I mean, well, one of them was. The other one was a little hard to get a read on. It's like a sphinx, kind of. Well, I suppose we'll have to put up with them for now. Hopefully everything goes well. Honestly, it's not the soldiers that I'm worried about. It's the leader. Marty's kind of, uh, what's a charitable word for treasonous, murderous maniac? Difficult. That's a fantastic word to use in her presence. Difficult. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, she's difficult. But so far, she seems to be on board. I just hope she stays on board. Mm -hmm. As the journey winds on, it'll become a little bit less exciting and a little more tedious. And weasels don't handle tedious well, in my experience, tend to turn boredom to violence. And unfortunately, when you're surrounded by mice, it's like being surrounded by food and being asked not to eat it. Thankfully, that food has gunpowder. And he points out one of the windows, and you can see the large cannon finally being fully affixed onto the back of the tortoise, and it rising back onto its feet, shaking itself a little bit to get stable. So Pretty sure. Sure. Plus, we have an ace up our sleeve. Hmm. Well, a number of them, anyhow. It sort of gestures to each of the tortoises. Every tortoise has a secret. Every tortoise has an edge. That one over there, and he points to the far side, and you can see one of the tortoises has a set of wooden rails on the back. What appears to be like almost a catapult structure on it. Um, and right below it, where the mice are, also three holes 
in the side of the wooden structure. And an area that seems to be filled with hay. And occasionally you can see a bird, bright, brilliant, red, orange, and green in feathering plumage, peek its head out, sort of turn around and make a little whistle as one of the mice nearby throws a seed in its mouth and disappears back inside. Air cavalry. We're thrashing it. Only three, but it's an edge. Over there, that one, and he points towards another one, and you can see on the back of that one, is an overgrown with moss and leaves. Like the whole thing is a potted plant that mice have me scampering through. And on the back, you can see occasionally a little bumblebee float by and disappear into the leaves. Right. We have a uh, little bee's nest on the back of that one. And then there's the big one. And he points over towards the tarp. That one. Oh, God. Damn it. Are you okay? Sorry. Your, uh, your friend from the other day has come to visit me. I am so sorry. Oh, no. And I can't find it to kill it. I don't know where it's gone. Oh, no. I'm so oh. sorry. <laughs> Slay him with, pre with extreme prejudice. Yeah. He is a treasonous, terrible mm. creature and a bad yeah. guest. If you, if you hear me yelp or something, it's probably because he came back. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. I hope one of your cats finds it and eats it. Yeah, the waffle's just literally laying here on my desk, licking his feet. So I don't think that's gonna happen. Cats are not useful when they need to be, dude. I'm sorry. What did you do, Omni? You sent him. You sent him to. Find, find I sent him to hell. If he arrived there, I can't it's, speak it's much for Texas. Ghost. It is Texas, yeah. so he came to the right place. Yeah. I'm say, sorry. You sent him to hell. That means you sent him to us. <laughs> Oh, God. Um, so he gestures at the uh, giant tarp. I can't speak too much about that. I'm friends with him. So he would hate me forever if I ruined his chance to show up. I see. Well, at least we were well prepared. But it would do us well to keep our guard remained, no matter how friendly these weasels may appear. It's fair. Well, I suppose it's time for us to batten down the hatches. I'm gonna go and see if I can catch up with Gwendolyn, and uh, make sure she knows we're good to go. And hopefully avoid Saxon. I really don't want to have to deal with Saxon. I fear I will have to deal with Saxon. Mm -hmm. Who, who or what is Saxon? Uh, Cedric slowly was stepping down uh, the little entryway into the chamber as he said. Then he turns around and smiles. The greatest sword fighter the Mouse Guard has ever had, and also the most stubborn mouse I've ever met, and also Gwendolyn's husband. So, all sorts of problems. I have somewhat of a Saxon in my own life, so I feel your- I share your pain. So I saw, he sort of looks out from the entrance, and you can see, as you say this, um, there, go, there he goes in the distance, <laughs> jumping over towards one of the other uh, turtles, being herded by a bunch of other guard. Toffrin, uh, Mildly protesting something, you can't be quite sure what it is. Um, Cedric smiles and nods and steps out of the gantry way. At this point, I'm going to ask, do you guys need to take a break or anything? Bathroom? I'm um, okay. Okay. Yeah, right, right now. All right. Give me one second. I'm just going to let the cat out because she decided she was going to go right now. Isn't that right, kitty? <laughs> <laughs> Be free. Very My roommate loves to come and hang out in here, bask in the sun all day, and then middle of stream demand to be let out. That's how it always comes. <laughs> so, um, your roommate doesn't even pay rent. <laughs> no, she doesn't. Although technically, I'm the one crashing in her. 
<laughs> for the past couple of years. Probably even licks her own butt in front of you. Oh, 100%. <laughs> never wears clothes. Always rude. Screams <laughs> until she gets fed. Absolute prima donna. Um, <laughs> so, the next hour or so goes relatively peacefully as everyone sort of hunkers things down on the mouse side of things. We jump back towards our weasel friends. Um, deep within the warren on the back of the tortoise, first off, it's a little weird in here. You've never actually been on a tortoise? It's not exactly a common experience even for the mice who they're allied with. But this, this is weird. Like, really weird. Because inside the tortoise, you can feel the rising and falling of its breath. And you can feel it through the ground beneath you. It's not, like, really unpleasant. It's just... Uncanny. It makes you feel unnerved a little. Yeah, like there's a, like it's a cave-in about to happen, but it's not. It's just you're on a turtle, not ground. Um, and inside of the weasel warren tortoise, um, you can see a small chamber at the very back of the topmost warren, which you can see can be stacked with pillows and a bunch of other things, but around it are a pair of holes in the wall and another pair further back and then one final one at the very back. And it appears they're literally head size. Uh, so the idea appears to be that she operates in the perspective of this is her, this is where she can be entitled to spend time with and be quiet and be left alone as each of those holes has what appears to be a latchable door on it. But if she needs to get your attention, she can open it up, peek her head in, and belt at you to get up there and poke your own head in so she can speak at you at leisure. So this meeting room is really less of a meeting room and more of like a chamber where multiple weasels can poke their head through a window to have her wait or command them. That's adorable. As I love that. Space. I'm just imagining it. It's so funny. Just like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> 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 for a human looking at weasels doing this this would be adorable for the weasels looking to deal with a megalomaniac who can invade your privacy at any time it's harrowing but entertaining uh, an image nonetheless um, however for this moment she appears to have wanted to bring you in so she reclines on a set of pillows on the far side and gestures towards a stack of pillows that Clearly aren't for guests, but she's allowing you to arrange them however it might make you comfortable to lean down, as standing isn't possible in this. You are on all fours within the inside of your warren at all times in here. It's just, that's how it's going to be. Um, and as she lays down and takes the giant blade that she had, puts it against the wall next to her, she rolls onto her back and turns her head to face the two of you. So then, how comfortable are you two working with mice instead of eating them? I'd say about the same. Good. Honest. Then she reaches over and opens a box and takes out what appears to be a hank of salmon skin begins to gnaw on it. Mmm. Exquisite. Making sniffing noises you can't hear. <laughs> Would you like a bite? She opens it with her tail again and sort of gestures with one foot like a paw that there's more in there if you'd like. Yes. Then take it. Just one, by all means. I take it and I slowly start nibbling on it like there's a catch here. She slowly closes the uh, box with her tail as she's uh, eyeing both of you two. Um, so, that's the case then. The calculus should be simple. We are here at the behest of the guard to do them 
a great favor. However, we are not merely their cataphracts. I will not simply be some knight in their quest. We are in this for our own purposes. As I understand, your uncle sent you to me. I am correct in this, correct? Yes? Hmm? Yes. Yes. Good. Your uncle, as I understand, has fallen out of favor in the dark head. Unfortunately. Not uncommon. It's not an easy place to live nowadays, and even harder place to succeed for the competent. So then, you help me, and I help you. When we get to this new place, we'll build ourselves new worlds, and weasels will come in time, and we shall be the lords of this place. Of course, I will be overlord, but I need lieutenants. And you two seem smarter than my other two, as she glowers her eyes toward the uh, hole. And you can see a pair of other weasels poking their heads like out of the dark and through the little portholes that she's left open. Um, that seems like it's a pair of conscripted weasel soldiers. Like They don't seem to have many titles or anything particularly fancy to them. Their dress is mildly armored, light chain alberks appear to be a possibly a bow the other one wielding what it seems to be a mace ball and chain but neither of them are drawn against her obviously left at their side and barely able to stand in the highly cramped lower tunnels anyway um as they sort of peer in we are loyal milady yes you are as you've proven many a time it's why you're with me you two, however, I didn't recruit just out of blind loyalty. Or did you, because you seem competent. At least according to your uncle. So I hope he was right. Earn your keep. You will be tunnel lord yourselves. With dominion over whatever stretch of the dark heather you can fight to keep. So long as you're willing to bend a knee. Do we have an understanding? I. Indeed. Excellent. Second order of business, she turns towards the holes. We're not eating these mice unless they earn it. And you can hear like an oh on the other side of it. I have a compact with Gwendolyn. And while just a few years ago, I would have given anything to have a scrawny mouse neck in my teeth. The deal is fair, and I will honor it, so long as it is the best option. So that means no antagonizing our would-be hosts. Same goes for the turtle. Don't gnaw on the turtle. And down below you hear, come on, just, mm -hmm. just a little boy. Just, just one. It's the only thing that will get us there. So you will leave her alone. Her name is Sedney. You're going to have to learn to name it. Refer to it frequently. It's not just prey. She's proud. Why they gave her to us. She's our warden. So be nice. Or else we'll have Raphael over here knocking with his fire pike, and I don't need that nonsense in here. <laughs> or Gwendolyn. Honestly, I'm less concerned with fire pike than I am with her. Raphael shows up, there's a 50-50 chance I can buy him off. It's Gwendolyn, she'll tan my hide without a second. Now, what what should I be entitled to do if some of these mice decide they have issue with me? She slowly le leans over and smiles. 
Then, my dear Diamondback, you do what you're good at. Killing things. If they decide they want to die by your blade, by all means, assist them. I'm not going to defend the life of every one of these pathetic small things. They are not food on this journey. But if they choose to be prey, they are prey. Especially if Gwendolyn asks us to do it. If that's the case, then by all means, please, with great pleasure, oblige her. And if they try to harm you, defend yourself. And if a mouse dies, so be it. But as for your trophies, she points towards the uh, skulls on your belt. You won't be taking anything that dramatic off of any of them you kill dead. If you do take a trophy, I'm going to at least let Gwendolyn know. She'll have final say. Unfortunately, that's part of the deal. Even if the mouse throws themselves on your spear, you are more than certainly entitled to a couple mouthfuls before it dies. Maybe even a little afterward, until they stop you. In the name of self-defense. I ate him out of self-defense. <laughs> <laughs> but... Self-defense was I was having a craving. <laughs> the defense was against it's... hunger. I swear to your honor, they were just really fucking delicious. I couldn't help myself. Um, <laughs> so, if they want to kill themselves, let them. However, leave enough of a body for the mice to burn. And if you wish to take a trophy, you must ask Gwendolyn, as most of these mice are conscripts and their gear is not their own. And even the ones that aren't conscripts and are mouse guard their gear is of the mouse guard and in the death most of it goes to the guard in name so technically it's Gwendolyn's while I don't mind the idea of eventually taking some trophies especially when we finally get to where we're going till then we play nice once we have ourselves somewhere new then what have you as long as you don't jeopardize our new home, feel free to indulge. That may be years from now, so get your fill while you can. Or you'll hunt something before you go get it out of your system, or hunt things on the road by all means. Just nothing with a cloak. Is that fair? I suppose. Good. Oh, and as for that behatted mouse earlier, Preston is a personal pest of mine. Do me a favor, and I will give you great glory. Don't let him talk to me. And I will personally see to it that when we have plunder to split, you get the lion's share. And then below you here, but, uh, mistress, we can do that. If you could succeed at it, I'd have had you do it. You are there to bear arms, as she slowly leans her head down, and nothing more until you prove yourselves capable. And you haven't. You're loyal. I didn't say you were good at this. But loyalty, unfortunately, has to be my primary motivator in selecting my men. She pulls her head back. And so you are insufferably unreplaceable. So rejoice have a fixed position in my ranks it doesn't mean I trust you with these sort of things. You two on the other hand seem to have more than two brain cells between you. I imagine you can get a little static electricity between that 
Direct that at Preston, keep him busy, entertain him if you must, but if he comes to my warren again, I swear it will be very difficult for me to avoid eating him. He's very crunchy, from what I can tell. I like crunchy. Anything you need to know otherwise about a journey before we all ship off to spend the next God knows how many years together? Feels weird saying that. Mouse word. We will endure for the greater good. Regardless of who we are with. Good. But with that, I feel like taking a nap. So, if you would be so kind as to let me have my warren to myself. I get up I immediately. So it is. She smiles. Good. You show promise already. And you hear the clack, 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 clack as she flips each of the uh, little doors over the holes closed. And you can hear a boss click as it gets cut off. Hello. Good night. Don't wake me when we leave. Let me know if Gwendolyn needs anything. Before she comes in my warren and as you two step out you can see she arranges the pillows and immediately just instantly out lays her head down and just oh, the guards about being an animal <laughs> pretty much um leaving you two with the two upper chambers which appear to be relatively tiled and connected the whole warren sort of built like a horseshoe on the topmost layer and the bottom most as well so, from what you can see, the top one is literally sort of like a tube just big enough for Maudie to sleep. The next two are a U are like a tube that sort of intersects for both of you. There is a bead curtain divide at the back and a place for you to rest. Uh, there's a couple of like cots and blankets back there, but it's they don't even I really shouldn't even say cots. It's just like dander or like a hay that they kind of threw back there. If you want to get something more comfortable before you go, you can try. Um, but it'll do. Probably slept on worse for both of you. Um, and you can tell from the shape and condition of the tunnel below, at least you have enough room to properly turn around in this thing and not have to walk backwards to get out. You can't even imagine how unpleasant it must be on the lowest level where they literally have to push each other out of the way and then walk backwards to clear the tunnel. Whoever that third person is on the bottom, if they need to go to the bathroom, they're going to be bugging somebody to get out every time. It's going to be infuriating for them. Um, so, but there's enough space to put your gear and your effects if you... Yeah, this does my stuff. Okay. So... Is there anything else anyone does before the caravan sets off? They are all banding down their hatches and getting ready to go. And you can imagine within the next 20, 30 minutes or so, you're probably going to be leaving. So, um, but they're tortoises. So it's not like when they're leaving, it's going to be like you missed a train or something. You can probably <laughs> pace these things if you walk beside them. That's probably the point. Tortoises can walk quickly when they want to, but more importantly, they can walk for a long period of time, bearing even a significant amount of weight. So, oh. now's your chance. I can't think of anything that my character would need. I think I'm good. Okay. So, in about half an hour later, uh, you start hearing a shrill set of whistles going across the area. And uh, one particularly stout mouse in red starts going along to each of the tortoises and barking at them one by one, accompanied by a crew of mouse guard themselves, clearly clad and ready to go on the expedition. Um, and this, this mouse is wearing a bright red cloak and wielding a great longsword, uh, a rather pretty make, actually. 
Um, let me see if I can. Yeah, there we go. That's the. Gotta say how nice it is just to be able to rapidly get this art at speed. Okay. This is the mouse um, that you all see going about barking at each of the uh, caravan as they're setting up, getting ready to go. And uh, eventually he arrives at Garo with uh, Sienna and Cedric at the very front, checking some ropes. Um, what are you up to, Sienna, as they're getting ready to leave? Is there anything particular you're doing? I'm probably laying low, trying not to run into Toffrin. <laughs> That's very fair. Uh, from what you can see, Toffrin is on another tortoise further ahead on the caravan, and appears to be okay. being kept busy for now. Mm -hmm. um, you can see he's carrying a great deal of heavy goods back and forth in the back of his tortoise, uh, and the crew seem to be keeping him quite busy. In that case, I'm probably watching him out a window or a balcony area, just like, you know, <laughs> put him to work. It's about time. Entertainingly, the top section of the tortoise is actually designed as a watchtower, and it leaves enough room to look out while also concealing its watcher, uh, its guards, rather well. It just requires you to sort of stand on like a little set of uh, wooden rungs in the upper layer. There's not really a, a second floor up there. It's just kind of like an open part you can peek out of. So you get to get a good eyes view from there, which is also where you can see Saxon approaching from, really. It's probably, you're probably the first person to see Saxon approaching, considering mm -hmm. Saxon, even to other mice, is relatively short, but thick. <laughs> a lot of thick. Saxon ahoy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cedric below you oh, stands up right and bumps his head on some of the timbers if you say that wait Saxon? Saxon's coming? Uh, I believe so I'm, as you described him that appears to be the mouse approaching oh great um, short, short stout fellow red cloak Indeed. red blade yes damn it the same <laughs> and he uh, he does a little whistle, and uh, the other mice who are nearby, battening everything down, uh, sort of pop over. He sort of whistles for you to come down from the top. All right, everyone, uh, on the edge of the upper gantry, and at attention, so that that way Saxon doesn't ring me out before we go. Let's get to it. And uh, he files out with a bunch of the other guard following. Um, you just kind of stand on the edge of that upper platform there, right outside the longhouse doors. And Saxon, with a pair of armored mice next to him, walks up to the front. And you can see he's holding his blade out, like brandishing it like a uh, staff. Um, and Garrow, as he approaches, nods his head. And Saxon doesn't even acknowledge him, just points his sword up at you guys. Oi, you lot, ready to go. Yes, sir. Good. Cedric, are they set? And Cedric nods. Yes, Saxon, they are. They're, they're quite set. We should be ready to go anytime you need. Good. Get Garrow going. We're leaving now. Follow the Invicta out. And uh, Cedric nods. Aye. Good travels to you, Saxon. And Saxon pauses and turns around. Good travel to you, Godmouse. See you out there. Let's go! As the uh, guards behind him nod and start walking. And you can see one of the mice that's running towards one of the other tortoises, like, at the last minute carrying something, and Saxon just kind of runs up behind him like a drill sergeant, just like, go, 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 go! The whole time, like, yipping at his heels. And the mouse just, like, faster and faster as he runs over to the uh, tortoise. You just Saxon kind of cackle as he's walking away. I love tenderfoots. So easy to get going. And, uh, gets sort of back towards the other different tortoises. At this point, Weasels, uh, he reaches your tortoise. He reaches Sedney. And Sedney also, like, grumbles and lowers her head. And Saxon nods to her, gives her a pat. Hey, uh, 
send me here. Morgan, give me a bit of a leg up here. And she grumbles. It's the only the way that I can describe the sound is I grumble. <laughs> and she lowers her head low enough for him to clamber on top. She then cranes her neck up, which brings her about eye level with the topmost burrows. You can see the other, uh, you two can both see him rise past you. This singularly, like, the brass balls on this mouse to come right up to a weasel's warren with a sword. And he just sort of pops himself up on the top and clinks the sword down on some of the tile. Oi! Morty, you ready? Marty slowly cranes her. Rush out very quickly. <laughs> uh, we are prepared. You can see inside Marty was starting to get up. And her eyes narrow. She nods and slowly lays back down on the pillows. Just. <laughs> like, goes right back into it. And uh, Saxon slowly turns to you. Ready, eh? All right, then. And he looks down at her, shakes his head. Waste of fucking fair. Fine. Be ready with my mark. You'll know it. And he sort of gently taps the side of uh, Sedney's head with the pommel of his sword. All right, girl. Back down. Thank you much. And slowly she crumbles and lowers her head back down. He steps off, reaches into his cloak and pulls out like a single, like for a mouse, a raspberry is the size of a mouse. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it's like one nodule off a raspberry. Sort of holds it up for her. <laughs> and she takes a bite. And the grumbling ceases. Thanks, girl. Keep an eye on them. And slowly gets his guard to follow him as they march back towards the front. You can see the turtles all starting to move, and all the support staff, all the mice, and all the uh, weasel attendants and the hedgehog attendants have all been getting ready, all sort of like pulling back. And next to you, the giant towering tortoise with the armored hull and the giant cannon slowly rises to his feet, and just this loud, deep uh, kind of sound as it stretches. And on his back, you can see, uh, on his back, you can see Raphael standing right below the cannon, leaning off of it, pointing with his halberd. All right, let's get ready to roll. And uh, you can see that the smokestacks in the back fire up, and you can hear the sounds of the hammering stop as slowly the giant cannon on the top that was sort of at a weird angle loudly clanks into place going forward and then with a large thoom locks itself into a slightly upright firing position um as the turtle begins to slowly move fucking turtle tank yeah <laughs> um at the very front you hear an even louder set of bangs and clanks as the giant tarp at the front of the convoy, the front of the caravan, is finally pulled off, and you can see this massive wooden and metal, what can only be described as a ship. Like a, a, a tri-hulled ship. But it's not on water. It's on land. And on the sides of it, you can see where there would normally be water wheels on a ship like this, powered by, it seems like some kind of steam engine, or some sort of black powder driven contraption. Instead of water wheels, there's a pair of what has to be the biggest wagon wheels you've ever seen, banded with iron. Um, and on the bottom, where there appear to be what seem like they're uh, water screws. Instead, there's a bunch of guiding rails and skis attached to the bottom. The design to let this thing sort of move on land. And at the very front and back, you can see three sets of what appear to be black powder weapons on gimbals and many crossbowmen. 
and guard mice, all of whom were wearing black cloaks, many of whom bearing multiple injuries, all of them sort of getting ready to go. And at the very front of the mast, you can see Preston silently shouting in the distance to shove off as the whole ship begins to slowly chug forward. Slowly, as it starts building up steam and moving on its own, as cheers of mice nearby begin sort of filling the air, and all the tortoises begin to slowly traipse forward, one step at a time. Garrow begins to move, and Sedney begins to move as the caravan finally begins to head out from Lockheed. I think this is where we'll end the session for today. So, Yay. let's take a good session. Quick, <laughs> thank you. I'm just very quickly going to go through this and uh, just say we have a bunch of goals I just want to quickly check off. So, Dukan, your job was to prove yourself useful. To the I character. did it. I did it. I intercepted. 100% you did. You absolutely did. Which means you get yourself an extra persona point. As everyone should have one fate and one persona point at the start, you now get a persona point. Um, likewise, next up, we have Delilah. Your goal was to get Dukan safely to the uh, to this expedition, and you did that. So, you also gain an extra persona point. You should be at two now. Yay! And finally, Sienna the Small. Mm -hmm. Your goal was to make it to the expedition safe and sound, which you have done as well. So all of you get yourselves an extra persona point. Yay. So well done, everybody. On session, I guess we could call this really session uh, episode one, episode one or 0 0.5 of Mouse Guard as you head off to the frontier. Thank you so much for letting me run this on the channel, Derek. Hey, I can't wait to run this. Thank you for doing it, man. It's awesome. Thank you. There'll be more adventure and more excitement in the future, but you gotta start off slow sometimes. So. Can't wait. Be a lot of fun. Well, let's uh, roll on through our shout-outs while I'll, I uh, find somebody for us to raid into in the background. Uh, Elise, you want to start us off? Yes, it's me. Hello, friends. I am Elise at Illustrate, and I am playing Delilah the Weasel. Um, I am an artist doing art things. Come follow me and join my newsletter. And thank you for having me, mm -hmm. Derek and Omni. I've had a really good time. Dude. It's, a, it's a pleasure. Couldn't ask for better players. Yeah, absolutely, man. Wouldn't wouldn't miss mm -hmm. having a Saturday session with you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Much love. Natalie, what's up? Not much. Uh, you can find me here most Saturday nights. And on Twitter at Beans. Yep. <laughs> Omni, the master of the game, my homie. What's up? Hey, Chief. Hello, everyone. I am the last Omnitech, your favorite robot American. And you guys can find me on stream on twitch.tv slash the last Omnitech, all one word. On Wednesdays, Thursdays, and also on Saturdays at 10.30 a.m. EST. However, it's going to be a little shake-up in our schedule. Um, Saturdays I will be streaming for an hour before session as a recap for the Mouse Guard session that will happen immediately after on DMDM Studios. So if you miss the sessions, you'll be able to catch the recap on my channel before the session begins. Um, I'll be running Mouse Guard here every other Saturday at some point moving forward. Um, and we'll have a blast. I'm looking forward to it. I believe that is 12.30? Yeah, you said 12.30 noon Central Standard Time. Yeah. So that should be a fun time. And other than that, uh, we just wrapped up AS, so what we're going to be doing is doing the Stellar Forge and Breakfast Club, middle of the week. So Stellar Forges will be on Wednesdays and moving forward, and on Thursdays we will be having the Breakfast Club as usual. 
And other than that, you'll spot me on Twitter. I'm starting to get ready to open up commissions again. And also on a couple of other channels, I'll be popping up as a guest character. I can't say who where, though, because that's a secret. Ooh, I know. And that's me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Omni. Thank you for running such a fun game, dude. This was awesome. It's very cool to be on the player side uh, with you running it. That was very fun. So much love, dude. Thank you very much. Oh, it's a pleasure, buddy. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Well, stick around, folks. We're gonna be gaming, uh, rating into Gamers Ledge. Uh, Mark's a friend of the channel, a uh, very big supporter, and we want to always share the love when we have the opportunity. Uh, you can find me tomorrow at two p.m. with the regular folks, uh, plus my boy Jihan and uh, Sean, or at Dells for Donors on Twitter. We're gonna be streaming a five e one shot called Vile. I'm probably going to TPK. It is gonna be glorious. Um, Curse of Strahd, Rise of Alma on Monday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And Saints and Sinners, a Runners in the Shadows actual play launching on Friday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's going to be starring uh, some of your favorite people from the TTRPG community. Uh, Huli from Heroes and Hooligans. Uh, Jihan, uh, one of the lovely folks from the channel. Uh, Soul of Soul's Rolls. Uh, Scald of Shenanigans, when she's able to play, she will be there. I know she's incredibly busy, but uh, she has uh, allowed me to book her for when she can make it. And um, also, uh, of course, we cannot forget the illustrious Klaus reprising again. Uh, more Blades of the Darkness on the channel. So don't miss that. That's going to be on Friday. But love you guys. We're signing off. Y'all have a wonderful evening.